I will welcome everybody after poor Trevor sits down again. Yes. All right. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you. Um, welcome to the Select Board, Board of Health, Sewer Commissioners meeting, February 7th, 2024, at 6 p.m. here in 8 Conway Street in South Deerfield. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with a particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. The meeting will be held in person in the main meeting room here at the Deerfield Municipal Offices. In accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, anyone intending to record this meeting must identify themselves to our clerk, Trevor McDaniel, and provide their name and address for the record. Thank you. And I'm calling the meeting to order, and we have public comment. Is there anyone that wants to make a public comment? Don't see anybody. Um, we can move on uh, to um, our first um, appearance, which would be um, Annie Curtis uh, about body kindness for kids hosted by Union 38 Family Network. Right. And um, she is asking us to review this program and then vote on supporting it. Yeah. So, Annie, hey. go ahead. Welcome. Hi, and I know Hi. I know Amy from the Family Network is also here, Amy. so I'm going to, she can chime in, um, but so they, the Family Network approached me to do um, probably like, a, I think we're thinking like an hour to an hour and a half long um, session, educational workshop for parents of um, elementary school age kids around sort of supporting healthy body image as kids grow ultimately with the idea of preventing things like eating disorders and just general sort of mental health issues that may come with that. So um, because I'm a school committee member, it was recommended that I bring this forward to the select board to approve and vote on just to sort of keep things as transparent as possible. Right. I think it's wonderful. Well, um, I just want to say thank you, Annie, for being willing to do this. And I will make a motion to support your program. And um and very thankfully say thank you. Yeah, well, it's it's a passion of mine, so I'm excited to share parts of that with the community, so. Great, thank you. So did you, Trevor, second it? I, I will second that. Thank you, Amy, too. It's good to see you. And I'm sorry for um, doing this, but I could you just give us like a two minute further oh, explanation sure. of what, sorry. what the program is? I mean, I, I'm I'm all in favor of kids and folks learning, and, I, and so just for the people online, if they can dial in, yeah. So, well, I think Amy can probably provide background on the types of like workshops that they already do. This is not necessarily like a novel thing to be providing right. workshops. And I know that it's also part of a series. Um, so I'll let Amy describe kind of what that is and what the Family Network's role is. Thank you. Appreciate it. So Amy can just unmute herself. Yeah. Just are, muted. Are you, you're... And Chris, can you unmute her? Is it possible? Or Amy, can you unmute yourself? Okay, that's okay. You so know what? I'm really trying. good at talking, so I will chat because oh. I've also been to um, <laughs> some presentations as a parent myself. So um, so for those of you who don't know at home, um, there's a regionalized grant-funded program that's sort of like hubbed in the Frontier School District, and Amy's probably, hopefully I get it right. Um, but they provide a ton of different programming to families that's technically geared to kids under five, but it's also part of the early childhood sort of hub, which takes care of pre-K and kindergarten, maybe even first grade, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, Kim McCarthy is the sort of head of that. So um, in addition to providing free programming to kids under five, like things at the library, they do music with Janet on Mondays. Um, they also sort of get the word out for preschool registration and 
um, making sure kids get registered for kindergarten. So they do a lot for our community, including these workshops. Um, and then the workshop that I'm going to do, I'm a, I'm a therapist. I'm also a personal trainer. So I'm in private practice working with people on body image and actually interestingly working with folks like in their early to mid twenties who, you know, were maybe involved in things like youth sports that maybe spurred some body image issues, um, or who maybe sort of like had messages around food as young kids that spurred some challenges with their bodies in their twenties. Um, so the idea behind this is to sort of give parents some very accessible sort of things to think about as they're interacting with their children around sports, around food, around how they get to know their bodies um, in hopes that they're really creating a nice foundation for later in life. So maybe they don't end up in my office in their twenties, but um, so that's really the idea is prevention. Great. great. That's great. Thank you. I, I, I just wanted to get a little explanation for anyone watching online. So yeah. Appreciate it. yeah. Thank you. Wonderful. Wonderful. So I'm glad we support. And uh... so any, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, I. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn S. I. Thank, Thank you, so you much very much, Amy. Thank you, Amy. Thank Amy. you all. Appreciate Thank it. You. Have a Take good care. night. Good night. Yep, you too. Bye. Um, uh, we have Valerie here right now. So why don't oh, we, hey, Valerie. Why don't we come up and talk about that? Because I can see that Julie is online. So she can probably um, ask some questions about the Board of Health budget. That was something you sent an email or no, oh, no, that's budget. Okay. Thank you, Valerie. Second oh, thanks. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Valerie. Yeah, Julia will probably have a um questions about the increase. Um but I think, Julie, um, there's about a 20% increase, and it's directly related to hours. But as if you remember, we, um, we had increased the hours based on Treehouse wanting, you know, or thinking that they were going to do more, we would have more food inspections there. And they hadn't really started up. So we cut the hours back. And now, um, Valerie, there, there, it's really the hours increase is all related to Treehouse, right? Correct. Treehouse takes about 50% oh, of my. You have to get in there. I'm sorry. Otherwise, Julie can't hear you online. Treehouse takes about 50% of my time. Um, and we did increase the permit fees um, to $50 every time uh, Valerie does go there uh, to do a food truck. And also, um, Valerie, I know it's just been one month, but um, how does it work out? Because we're trying to eliminate the paperwork that Pat has to do. And that was part of, you know, it's staff expense. It's not accounted for. So how is that working? I know it was only one month, but. We haven't had any food trucks yet. Oh, <laughs> okay. All right. So with, with winter coming, I would expect them to start coming about March. Mm. Okay. Um, so I guess that we don't really have, um, we don't know if that's going to work out yet or not, but all right. So what I did was um, I inspected 170 food trucks last year. And that equates to about 50% of my time. And we're expecting more this year because of the increase in occupancy. Right of treehouse and they're expecting more as well right although we don't know if i can't do a projection because we don't know yet Not you. yeah uh on the salaries i based my salary on 25 hours for six months and that would be the six months that treehouse is operating plus my other food inspections and then 20 hours for the rest of the year yeah and with Richard's salary, 12 hours times 52 weeks comes out to 627 hours. I put him in at 650 because there's issues with, if there's issues with septics, 
things run over, this will give them just a 23 hour cushion for the year. I think that would be appropriate. Is, is that still keeping him under the amount of hours he can work? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's so old. That, that, that doesn't the number of hours change. Too. The number yeah. of hours. Okay. Yeah. I just, I knew it was at, at a time he was limited on how many hours he could work, but if that's not an issue, then no. it's not an issue. He's beyond the. Okay. Yeah. All right. So the number of hours he has this year was way low. It was, was, was budgeted very low compared to what he actually needs. Mm -hmm. But that's this year, so. And we're working on next year. So right. we're looking at um, 650 hours for him okay. at, at his salary with a, the 2% COLA. So are we able to offset any of the nacho grant in any of this budget? Um. Yes, we're offsetting the public health nurse. Okay. Uh, for it doesn't any of show that... in this budget, but right. It, but we it's, just, it's for specific activities. Right. It's for emergency, any kind of emergency preparedness. Mm -hmm. So any of her visits that are, um, to people's homes for assessment of, you know, mm -hmm. how vulnerable they are, mm -hmm. or um, anything related to updating the um our list of vulnerable population list and all that kind of stuff. That's that's taken off on the nature grant money. Okay. So that's on the budget. Um, and the ex the expenses, I I level funded the expenses, but I did uh, reduce one. I reduced the training. You right. had two thousand dollars for training. I reduced that to one thousand mm -hmm. dollars because I don't. I think that that's more realistic. Right. So typically, um, our trainings we need our hours um, every three years for septic and for septic and Title Five. Um. Also, uh, the dues um are being offset by the PHE grant, so we could probably reduce that a line item. You know, like um, the mass. Health Officers Association yep. dues and the W and the WMPHA dues. Yeah, they're all being paid under the grant now. Okay. Um, Pat was notified of that, so um, we could we could just leave that like say a hundred dollars or something or you know some. How some long token. will that grant go for though? Right, it's eight years. Oh, okay. So I was thinking like if it goes away next year, now we're looking like we're racing again. So no, okay, so it, just. You want to revise that too? Yeah, we could revise that tonight. Did you have a question, Casey, on that line? Not on that line. I okay. Uh, I wonder if about we... salary, or not. Mm -hmm. Also, if we do reduce that to a hundred, can we put a, an explanation down here? Yes. Yeah, this is being, being reduced because grant. grant is paying it for the next offset by you know for the next eight years or whatever. Yeah. No, we don't want to say eight years, but we'll just say grant offset. Okay. Yeah. We should. Yeah. So I'll make a motion to reduce the dues line item by uh to by nine hundred dollars to one hundred dollars. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchi aye. Trevor Carol McDaniel aye. Carolyn Ness aye. Okay. Casey, and do you you need to speak? I just no, are uh, well, yes and no. Are you I'm sorry. We're still on that. expense uh, at the moment. We're on expense. Did you go through the rest of the expense or are we just talking we're about the dues? We're, we're starting still just starting to. Yeah, we reduced supplies um, by 500, it looks like, from last year. And then everything else was level funded. Um, and, and other than meetings, went, went down 1,000, too. So I think that makes sense. There's nothing else that we really need to cover in this, right? Correct. Okay, sounds good. Since we moved the nurse out of this line anyways to this front line. Julie, did oh. you want to ask any questions about the salary lines or anything? No, I don't have a copy of this yet. We'll just see it when it gets to finance yeah. committee. Sounds okay. good. Sounds good. Casey? So that was actually my my consideration as you guys were talking. So the NATO grant is a finite amount of money. Right. Um, and it because the grant was awarded, it's still in our coffers. I just want everybody to understand that with that finite amount of money, any offset will end at one, at some point. Correct. So that's just my... Exactly. And we don't yep. have an offset 
amount in this budget. We'll have to talk to, right. Um, right. I'll have to have Valerie talk to Brenda. Um, the, the nature grant money probably is going to last for a couple of years based on Cindy, what Cindy does for activity. Mm -hmm. Cause it's, it's based it's on activity. Need. Based. Right. Yeah. It's based on need and home visits and what she feels is like a home visit for emergency kind of thing, or just yep. a check-in. Right. If it's a check-in, it com comes under her regular stuff. However, we might want to let people know that we do have two additional public health nurses part-time because of the P public health excellent grant as right. well. And that is essentially an eight-year, part of the eight-year grant. So We should definitely have a another meeting too to I think pull the towns together and kind of talk about that a little bit too because yeah. there is some change in Greenfield and right so yeah we yeah. should just kind of all get together and figure out um, how I that serves us all yeah um we I have um I know you meet all the time yeah I was just gonna say we have monthly meetings right and um I go to the state the state monthly meeting as well as our local meeting so every month so mm -hmm. I mean, anything that you need to know, I can let you know. But okay. we can also have, um, when they get a new health director in Greenfield, right. we can have we can have them come down and meet us. Because, because I, they have, they're their the backup. Is that they're supposed to come to the Board of Health meetings and like yes. report and that kind of thing. So. What, what they would do is be our backup. Right. Like say Valerie is sick mm -hmm. or she goes on vacation and Dick can't cover. Yeah. Then we have That'd coverage great. from the... Uh, public health grant right we don't have to have a line item right. for just an understand because we're understanding i mean yep. normally dick and valerie back each other up but right this this is in addition to we have additional hours mm -hmm. if um you know something happens or or we have additional workload like if treehouse has a giant event and you yeah. know there's additional help for that kind of stuff all right it's not so a full-time inspector. It's one inspector and shared by all. Do people. we want to vote on, uh, are we doing these now or no? Or are we, are we approving well, these or do you want to do them There later? was an increase in this budget and I wanted it to be explained and I wanted everyone to understand. And and that, and if anyone had questions, I wanted Valerie to be here to answer mm -hmm. the questions. So that was the only reason. If, if Well, we're going to go over budgets a little later in the agenda. Yeah, right? but if you wanted to vote on this tonight, it would be fine. Yeah, we I could mean, probably right go through. Yeah, that's fine. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, the only question I have is, is there any number written down that says with the fee increases, how much money we're going to bring in? Um, because if we're yeah, yeah. thinking that the expenses are going to be offset by the fee increases, I'd like to know what that. Well, you're not supposed to make a profit. and um, I realize that. We, I'm just saying. But yeah, our but, fees are, the fees that we collect do offset our uh, salaries. So uh, I guess what I'm saying is we're What's going from 88,000 to 106,000. Right. What is the fee what is the fee structure um increase due to offset the cost of operating this service? I mean that's not making a profit it's just asking a question. Okay. So do we have an answer to that or no? I don't. Do you have that rollout that I gave you before? Uh, you know what? It's at my house. I okay. have I have every single food inspection mm -hmm. um, for the temporary food events. Yeah, yeah. Well, we did one hundred and seventy. Mm -hmm. Quick math. <laughs> Quick math. It's me. Yeah. Well, last year, last year we took in fifty nine fifty in temporary food mm -hmm. and food trucks. So if we take that same 50, number. Are you saying $5,950? Yes. If we take that same number with the same number of food, uh, temporary food, that's 8,500, but we're expecting an increase. Okay. So Eight. it's $8,500. Uh, okay. That's good. I just was trying to figure out, is it in the, you know, Six digit, five digit, or what? It you know, so that's it's, it's four digits. It sounds like it's not covering seventeen thousand, but we still have, a, you know, we still have to cover. Well, that you, that's, that's just not that. That's yeah, that part. It's yeah, the actual. Else. Uh, but we we have when they they have an annual permit that they have to pull, mm -hmm. which is one hundred and fifty. Right. How many of those do yeah. we do? I mean, Brenda can give us the income. Yeah, we, we don't need that. that. It's, it's fine. Yeah. 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 And the I, same as Dick. Dick is doing. You know the like title fives mm -hmm. septics. The, the reason why I'm asking these questions is because um, 
Julie and the Finance Committee rightly point out that we need to think about what are the impacts of decisions. And one of the impacts is like you hire an FTE, you've got to consider the, the cost of health insurance. Right. So, you know, before approving an increase of, you know, 20%, want to know the numbers that are backing up why this is not going to be a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Well, before Monday's um, discussion, I will get what the receipts are from the health department. All right. And and basically it's a wash. And these are these are numbers that are kept by which person who's responsible for tracking our finances? Brenda. Brenda okay. would have Good. our um health department receipts. All right. Good. Just want to make sure that we, we it's all in the there book. are no <laughs> fees related to housing kind of and hoarding kind of mm -hmm. those things. But right. We just everything related to service. um permitting fees that like Safety. um Val Food just went service, to uh right. this, you know the regulation and swimming pool. Yeah. That's a fee. Right. Everything she does is fee related otherwise. That would be everything, swimming pools, ice rinks, all those mm -hmm. generate a fee. Yeah. Yep. Um, Perfect. Kitchens, inspections, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we can we can set, find out what the revenue is generated by the health department. It's more than so do we want to support this now or? Yeah, I will make a motion to vote on it right now. Okay, I mean, it seems like we have great staff in place to take care of what we need to well, do. This is what yeah, it costs. I know. I, yeah. And again, I just want to say thank you, Valerie, in public. Yeah. You're Very so grateful. wonderful to you have someone job. come Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays. It's so lovely. Thank you. You're welcome. So are are we as the select board, you're suggesting we're going to take a vote? Yeah. Yes. No. Agree to this? yeah. I made the motion. So, I just need a second. For the, yeah. So you made a motion to support yes. um, account number 512-5110 in the amount of $106,269. Right. Yep. Okay. I'll second that. All those in favor? Tim Helchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And then the other um, health board budget is um, 512-5400. Mm -hmm. I will make a motion to support that for- um, It's going to be 900 less than that. Yeah. Right. It's, I think if my numbers are right, it is $12,575. Okay. Um, I make a motion to support 12575 for board of health expense. I'll second that. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Um, Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay, perfect, guys. Um, thank you, Valerie. Did you have any other questions or anything you wanted it to is, ask about? Yeah, anything else you're working here? on? Who is um Who is managing the public health excellence grant now? Um, well, Meg Tudorin is sort of the lead person because the they have have not filled the health director role. So um, when we have our, like tomorrow morning at 8.30, we have our regular monthly meeting. Uh, it's just Meg Meg is the one that is in sort of organizing and in charge of it. Okay. Greenfield already has all my documentation from my trainings and my certifications. Okay. Oh, so are they still asking you for that? I thought they, that all got sorted out. Um, I got an email about a month ago regarding that, but okay. all those, all those, uh, all my certifications are there. Okay. Already. All right. Let me, um, I'll, I'll make, I'm making a note to, to make, let, make sure that Megan, cause we just have to file it with the state. Right. So we're in compliance. Okay. And, and I just want to, um, remind that we, we're going to need to update this board of health thing to subtract the 900 and then readjust the the negative percentage increase. Yes. Yeah. So well, I don't know who does that, but uh, Brenda, Brenda, usually, Brenda will. Brenda will. As soon as she sees it, I'll leave my copy on the desk. Okay. Um, and I'll and Casey, can you just ask her to um generate the um board of health receipts? Yep. Um, so that we have that information for the finance committee on Monday. Okay. Um, thank you, Valerie. I really appreciate you Thanks, staying Valerie. so late. <laughs> um, next item on the agenda is the select board reports uh, and announcements. Uh, um, I wanted to hit on one thing real quick. Just um this has been in my basket for a little bit. Uh, so you light up my heart, Luminary Night, uh, sponsored by the Deerfield Rec Department. 
Um, we have special people in our lives that make us happy, be, uh, be it family or friends that make us smile in good times and bad. Let's celebrate those we love and show our community spirit by lighting up our walkways and driveways with luminaries on Valentine's Day, February 14th, um, which is a Wednesday from 6 p.m. Till, till the candles go out. Um, so you can fill uh, heart cutout bags or milk jugs with sand and votive lights and uh, place them along driveways and walkways, decorate your door and yard with hearts and red lights, um, drive around town and toot your horn to support all those who have decorated. Um, heart cutout bags and votive candles are available from the rec department, if they still have them. Uh, the 10 bags, 10 tea lights for 10 bucks. Um, to order bags and arrange pickup, contact Sue Antonellis at um, recdept at town dot deerfield dot ma dot us or 413-665-1400 extension 107 to get sue and she would love to help you out uh, with supplies oh thank you trevor yep um the one thing i want to talk about for sure is a road update and i just want um to make sure the board is have consensus on what is happening at the moment um right now uh there's three things that I think that still need to be done. Um, we we need to stabilize McCullen Farm Road and Deeper Road. And I think we can do it for fairly inexpensive. And inexpensive, I mean like twenty dollars or $30,000, $40,000 range. But the reason why it's serious is because it's literally, they're literally fluffing off even with no even really storms. I mean, it just is there. It's falling in and we were going to really leave those roads closed. So. I would love to leave depot closed. Yeah, we are. We are. Yeah. It's, the it's the, the only reason, the only reason, yeah, because I think we should still leave it closed we're and closed. we'll, fixing them up we'll let, we'll, we'll hear from Kevin as well, but there are water lines in that road and where the erosion is taking place is eating over close to Okay. Suddenly, it's going to cut the water lines. All right, that's and, a different story. Um, yeah. yeah, and what's happening as the as the trees, as the erosion takes place, the trees McCollum Farm Road. Yeah, well, in well, both places, yeah. they tip over their root ball, pulls a huge chunk of soil up, opening up gullies that then, when it rains, all that soil just starts to wash away. Mm -hmm. McClellan Farm Road, in particular, is is a disaster. I just was out there this yeah, morning. It is bad, and um. You know, I could easily see you know, with with no intervention there, there's going to be a ravine up to the uh, the culvert that's like 150 feet away from the culvert that's right. currently, you know, feeding into this ravine. Yeah. So, um, well, I would I would just like to I this guess this is minimal. So. so what I would like to do because I feel like our road stuff is getting away from me a little yeah. bit yeah. and my. I acknowledge agree. and it like every time we turn around oh we're starting another project or we're doing this one right. without us voting on the specific item and the dollar amount we're spending so if we can that's why i brought it we, up right so if 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 we get a dollar amount and a project and a, a, a quick write-up of what we're going to do and when we're going to do it then i'm happy voting on it without just like oh uh, well know. these are uh mccollum farm road and depot road would be done like soon to, you know, next couple of days kind of thing. Kevin, do you have a exact number? Um, we, oh, you're muted. No, he's not muted, but there's something happening there. Let me fix it. Is it the cable or what the heck's going on? Oh, Julie was able to, we heard yeah. Julie just a couple of minutes ago. Can you guys hear me? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I can't hear Kevin either. His mic isn't working, I bet. Why don't you hop off and come back in, Kev? Okay. Yeah, I mean, while we're waiting for Kevin, um, I went out to... Hawks Road, I went out to McClellan Farm Road, I went out to Depot Road. Um, I agree that Depot should be closed. And I also said to the chief, because he was the one driving me around, is what we need to do is break out each of these projects, say what what is the expected cost, mm -hmm. and um, 
then let the select board make a decision about it. Right. And having said that, um, I agree that Depot and McClellan make sense to do simultaneously because they're going to have to rent this 60 foot um, boom excavator so that they can mm -hmm. put the rock there. Basically the solution is to like put we a, did one river. Yeah. Put a bunch of um, riprap in to, to get a 45 bank mm -hmm. uh, where we can and stop the, stop the uh, pressure for the, the road just falling into this ravine. Okay. He's talking 30, 30 trucks full. Right. So, uh, so Kevin, Kev, you, Kevin, do you, um, can you hear, can we hear now? Can't hear you now. No, oh. I still can't hear you. Is, Is there... Julie on? Can she hear us? Yeah, no, Julie was spoke. And she could we speak. heard Julie. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, Julie yeah. can hear. Yeah, yeah, we can hear Julie. We can hear so Julie. Is, 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 it's got to be so something on Kevin, your, Is your volume? Uh, Kevin, is your volume up? up? Yeah, it's no. up. Okay. <laughs> um, no. You right. can always well, try calling in, Kevin. Are yeah. you are you faking, Kevin? <laughs> you got somewhere to be. <laughs> All right. Well, and the other the other thing, um, the other one, to me, there's only one more one that I want to address. And that is Hawks Road. And this is the situation with Hawks Road. We we could get a D D D um R grant potentially. Um I think we have a story. Uh but you have to look at the fact that our staff is gonna have to write help write the grant, and then they're gonna have to report the grant, and we don't have a guarantee that we're gonna get the grant. For almost the same amount of money, if we if we do those what is suggested under you know what John and Kevin are suggesting, the same amount of money, you know less than a hundred thousand, which would be our match minimum for our match, and the engineering right. solution, and all that permitting and all that kind of stuff, we still have to even with a grant we still have to come up with a match. Plus the opportunity lost of using our staff to do the grant work. I I, I am really looking at what they suggested as a real opportunity for us to just take care of it. And I think it will work. Well, I would just like it on a piece of paper with the amount, like how much we spent already in our July storms. Well, and then we, we how do, much each project's going to cost. We do know that. Already. Right, I know, but I don't have it here, like in well, front of me. We had, so we had it from last meeting. Yeah, and we were talking about that two hundred twenty thousand. That hasn't really changed for for the projects that were all listed. Mm -hmm. Okay, but in my mind, there's just Hawks Road and McCollum Farm Road and Depot Road left. We're going to leave everything else off. Mm -hmm. And we're we'll probably be it will probably be um two million three total. So and then I just want to put together like I, I'd love to see that on a piece of paper that says what we spent, the well, the co the cost of what we have left to do, the money that we have from the state, the money that we have from emergency repairs from a couple of years ago, the money we're going to pull out of general stabilization so we can even those things out and go, this is what our budget is. This is what we're spending. And then I would vote that because I don't, I, I'm nervous about, okay, maybe it's this, or we're going to do this. We're going to fix it. We might be this much and we don't really know. And like, we I, do know. We I do know, know we do, but I don't have a, I don't have anything that I can vote on that says Hawks road is 120,000. That's what we're going to spend on this. Um, I, I don't Kevin, I don't have any have... specific numbers in front of me, and I don't know what we've spent already and what we have to spend because we want to rescind this five million dollars that everybody was up in arms about. Uh, or Trevor. we want to go, I want to borrow a hundred thousand, which doesn't make sense. It's not enough money. Or we need more money to do other stuff, but we just need to make a holistic decision on it. Well, I I thought we had it laid out, but can, can you guys hear me now? Yes. yes, we got gotcha. you. Kevin, do you? Hi, yeah, I, I don't know. I signed on with Peg's computer and it seems to be working fine. Yep. Okay. Um, all right, so I, I kind of lost part of what you were picking up, but I also picked up a little bit at the very end of it. And Margaret, if, if you, you give, give me a little latitude here and, and let yeah. me give you a couple of quick things here and maybe okay. this will answer most of the questions you may have. River Road is basically status quo. It's stabilized. Nothing has moved. Broughton Pond has been replaced with a failed culvert with twin 24-inch pipes 
that is completed. Waitley Road replaced the culvert um, that's already been done across the street, but we still got to finish the other two uh, basins right there. Uh, that should be finished hopefully tomorrow, maybe Friday. Matthews Road is starting on Monday, and that's replacing the undersized pipe with a 16-inch pipe at the Conway Town Line. So quick, John quick. and I will be meeting this Friday to try and put together numbers for Hawks, McCullen Farm, mm -hmm. and Depot Road repairs. I have also reached out to the railroad, to, to the two people that, that I've had to contact with, to find out, hey, look at, you know, once again, Depot Road, you know, I'm not telling them that I have a water main there. Because then it's going to go, oh, well, you know what? Well, you've got just as much skin in the game. I'm not telling them that. All I'm saying is what's going to fail is going to be your railroad. What are you going to do about it? So we're hoping that's going to be the, a, a good direction to go in. But once again, you know, uh, you know what, what, what Tim saw today and some of the thought processes and, and, and how we can stabilize what we've got, if they're not ready to move, we, we need to be able to stabilize that road to make sure you don't lose a lot of money. Um, so... But again, all of those things, you know, between Hawks, McCollum Farm and Depot Road, we're, we're putting our heads together. Again, we're going to be reaching out to the railroad saying, hey, look, at you know, you need to be part of this process for McCollum Farm Road. So the simple fact is, is they're upstream from us. They're where our water comes from. It's their, their, uh, their fire pond is where the water comes from. You know, so they've got a culvert that they have to be aware of, that they have to make sure that they're working properly because otherwise ours is going to fail. Um, but again, these are all things that we want to, and I agree with, I understand completely where you're coming from, Trevor. We will go ahead and put it together. We'll have it lined up. We'll have it uh, basically a scope of each of the jobs with, with, uh, within reason, uh, right. estimate. Uh, I like get that. Can't be exact. Yep. That, that, and that, so that, that's our basic plan. And, and I've already reached out to Casey and asked her if we can go ahead and, and both John and I actually be uh, in person for the next one in two weeks. And I basically asked her, I said, you know, if you can be early in the agenda, that'd be cool. Um, and it looks like possibly probably around 630 because I see your one of your hearings got postponed until next next meeting. So, um, uh, I have, I have okay. a question for you. Questions? Yes. Would you and John have the the Hawks um, Depot and McClellan numbers together by next Wednesday where we could have like a brief one topic road meeting so that we can move. I, I understand the urgency, particularly in, in my vi vision, McClellan Farm Road is a major disaster. Mm. And, um, if you don't do something quickly, it's going to be a problem. And to a lesser degree, Depot Road, I don't, I looked at the soil erosion that's happening there and, you know, the banks shear off mm -hmm. the side where the water pipes are. So, I don't want to wait two weeks, but I want to have numbers. I agree with Trevor. And I, yeah. and I mentioned that to, to John today. I have no idea. Uh, maybe Matthew's Road is on some spreadsheet that, you know. Yeah, right. I don't have a total yeah. of that. So I don't know how close to the Conway line is it. Is it possible that it's within like the, is it really in a Deerfield? No, I'm just joking there, but. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. Sorry. And And <laughs> yeah. how much are we envisioning spending there? Just to put that culvert in, it's. Uh, the, the 60 inch is like seven seventy five hundred dollars for the the pipes is yeah it... per, per piece and you're going to need probably at least three stacks in there you're going to need six okay feet so we're talking twenty one twenty one thousand dollars for the pipe just the pipe correct and then then the cruise and so, then plus we got the machinery you know and granted you know we're, we're very fortunate with using moroski in there yeah. you know he's he's uh I don't want to put it this way, but he's cheap money for what it, what we get out he's of him. A, he's been a hero for Deerfield. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, he he has done above and beyond for for what we have needed. And, and yeah, I can't. I, and, you know, and, and you know, I don't want to take him away from Cocot or anybody else, but you know, Mike has definitely done an exceptional job for us. Yeah, you know? they've all been great. Yeah. One one final thing, and then we'll get Julie and Margaret. Um, so Matthews, that's the last thing we're going to do on Matthews Road, unless you know we have another. You know, until until we we all come to a consensus on which direction you want to go to next. Uh, Kevin, I just want to clarify because um, this it, it's in my mind that there's just McCollum Farm Road, Depot Road, and then Hawks Road that we were going to work on. We were not going to do anything further on River Road at this point, right? That is correct because presently, right now, River Road is stat is, is stabilized, is status quo. Um, guardrail is going to have to go in. Um, 
that being said, you know, uh, again, you need to think about uh, how we how we pay for that one. Because um, long story short is is with the new entanglement requirements that are now required by DOT, if you're utilizing their funds, that you have to abide by their rules and regulations. And right. each entanglement is around seven grand a piece. Right. So you're looking at fourteen thousand dollars. Whether you put in a a something that's a thousand feet long or ten feet long. Right. Uh, and it doesn't make a difference of the if the the um, speed on the road is a school zone at twenty miles an hour or your mass bike doesn't make a difference. It's all the same, unfortunately. Okay. So. No, but you know, I, and, and then and then if you look at a regular terminal end, it's eighty bucks each end. So I, do, I I guess to recap, we've got what we spent already, and I know we've we've done Child's Crossroad this week. Yep, wonderful. Uh, we, we're going to be up at Matthews, wherever else we're going to be. Um, I I just wanted to have what we spent. Yep, what we have um done this week you know, what that's going to cost us and then what we're planning for next week or what we're planning to finish up. And I just want to know that it goes, that it stays under one four and we um, maybe can rescind all this borrowing. Um, we haven't, and we've looked at, you know, general stabilization, how much we're going to pull from there. We looked at the state, you know, any all that stuff. I just want to make sure that well, we've got our hands around it and we know it, where we're it's at. It's my intention. It's my intention, Trevor, that we finish up with these three roads Cox, Depot, and McCollin, and then we do nothing more. Um, and and that is how we're gonna end up with discussions. We we need to discuss with the finance committee, we need to discuss with Brenda, us, we need to decide where we're gonna pull the money from. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully we can rescind all five million dollars. I I believe our expenditures to date are still within what we had expected. You know the two point four. But that's what I want to make sure with the work we're going to do this week and next week and the no, other no, road. No, uh, we are. Yeah. we are. This is my intention. It's your intention, but I just want to make sure it is. It fact. is. I don't. You know, yeah. I don't have. I don't so have the budget we'll, in front of me. So. We're, we're repeating ourselves. So let's let's see what Margaret has to right. say. Yeah, Margaret. Margaret I'm sorry to make you wait. Go ahead, Margaret. There she is. Oh, no, oh, Margaret, now it's her, her doesn't work either. Yeah. Margaret, we can't know. hear you either. I think you got the same problem that Kevin has. Yeah. Do you have your husband's account? <laughs> <laughs> well, weird. let's try Julie. Yeah, well, exactly. Margaret, we don't well, hear Julie. No, it's your me, Blavin. Um, yeah. so, so I asked, um, let me back up. Next Monday at Finance Committee, John Paturik is coming to present police budgets, and we're going to be talking about that. I asked him while he was there if he could also bring the summary that you're just talking about. It sounds yeah. like it may or may not be ready. Um, Kevin, I should have included you in that email. Um, but we may be talking about this next Monday, but I think Finance Committee is very interested in hearing the exact same thing you're talking about right. Um, right. doing. So it like if Monday is appropriate, we'll talk about it Monday. If it's just not, you know, you're not quite ready or whatever, then we'll push it off. But we do want to have that conversation at Finance Committee also. That's great. Julie, we have um storm damage expenses as of of this Monday. Yeah. Two five. Okay. We can perfect. Two million seventy eight thousand six hundred and sixty eight dollars and fifty nine cents. But it does not include the no, work. Correct that we were that was done at child's cross road and boynton pond and i don't know if there's any other bills that yeah, have been no, out there I from the know. last year or whatever okay. but yeah so maybe since he's going to be there we can do a quick update yeah. that sounds with right. all of us yeah. at that meeting right. and then when we need to we'll, yeah. we'll revisit it again right so yeah. when it's ready the, the, the big the bigger expense one is hawks road but like i said i I've been going back and forth on it, and I think it makes sense to address and stabilize that right now. And it Come will be on. than the match for our a grant, I and it would be it. just as effective. So, and um, Margaret, let's try Margaret. Sounds again. like Margaret. Margaret we got a 
I don't know. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. yes. Can oh, that's great. Okay. Maybe it just required turning off the video. <laughs> um, so Kevin had mentioned, I remember at the information session, Kevin had mentioned that Hawks Road could be around $192,000. I don't know why that number sticks in my head, but it, it's, I'm sure that's po entirely possible. My question is actually Chapter 90 funds. So we, uh, it looks like Deerfield had an FY24 apportionment of $383,473.49. Casey, is that right? I believe so. Kevin, is that right? And how is that going to be applied to some of this work or will it be? Um, what we're doing, Margaret, is we're doing the top coat like for Hawks Road, the paving on Child's Cross Road. Um, that will be chapter 90. Kevin will run it through um, mass DOT and get permission to do it as well as the guardrails, uh, mm -hmm. various locations through the town that will be done in the spring. This work that is emergency um, emergency done, you can't really, you can't do it through chapter 90. Well, I know you have to request ahead of time. You'd have to yeah. request permission from MassDOT. So is there any portion of this work that you're discussing able to wait to request from MassDOT permission to, to do some of it? Like put it with like some of the guardrails, some of the storm drains, anything, nothing? I think so like for instance on Hawks Road, most of the work that's being proposed is culvert related, and I don't know that it would necessarily be covered by Chapter ninety five. Yes, it would. But it well, would. if in a non emergency I, situation, I, it would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but this is being done under emergency go rules. But I do know that um, if I remember what Chief Pachorik was saying today, is that the discussion about any paving out there would be putting a base coat in using Chapter ninety money after the other work has been done. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We so finishing up. Yeah. It's tidying up these projects with Chapter 90 money? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes, that we can pre-request pre for the spring. But when we're doing the actual repair work under emergency order, um, they won't approve it. We also do, um, you know, we try to use the chapter. And we, we can't forget with like our regular maintenance stuff yeah. as well. So. I mean, normally well, right. we, only funding we have a pavement management plan. So we try to keep with that, but I know. Oh, not. you do have a pavement management plan? I asked yeah. for a copy of that. I'm, wonder I'm wondering. Yeah, if but I you know what, Margaret? It's pretty worthless because. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and the reason why is because climate change. Um, yeah. The temperatures are so warm and cold and, you know, water gets into the, the, the pavement isn't lasting. So. Yeah. The plan okay. that we have, no one. we we are using the plan as a priority and a, a listing. Kevin, like River Road, um, he saved up three years um, or almost three years worth of um, uh, Chapter 90 money because it was well over a million dollars. Same thing as Lower Road. It was three years. We saved the money. And all the so all the paving in town is being still done with Chapter 90, mm -hmm. but when you look at the actual plan, we we need to we need to make another plan that takes into consideration that the pavement is no longer lasting fifteen years. Oh, it's, good. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's it's eight to twelve. Yeah. And, I I appreciate that. Um, yeah. I'm sure the plan will need updates, and I yeah. also appreciate the fact that the select board is watching all the numbers very carefully and mm -hmm. looking for looking for lists. That's very helpful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Margaret. Appreciate your comments. Um, so I guess maybe we'll regroup Monday at finance and then. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can vote on this on Monday yeah. or, you know. Yeah. Or if we don't have complete information on Monday, is there we, any yeah. interest in having a, a yeah, short. Yeah. We can short Zoom meeting Zoom on when, or, Wednesday. Yeah. I, I don't have a problem with that. I, I just want to be able, because of the emergency situation where we yeah. have decent weather. I, I know we don't want to. I mean, it's good weather. We don't want to lose yeah, any more Mike, of that. Yeah, if Mike can get out there, yeah, and... February is being cooperative. Yeah. Yep. So I just want to make sure we got our funds um, around it all. Chris and Casey topic. could. Um, we're already posted for Monday. So if with this with the finance committee, um, and Julie, I'm sorry. It's Valentine's Day. It's actually really Wednesday be here. <laughs> Julie, I apologize. Oh, I had the three fiftieth, and then I had a Mapco meeting, so I missed the last two finance committee meetings. But um, for the rest of the season, I don't have commitments on Monday. So um, um, I'm sorry. But I did review um, the meeting minutes from Jim Cambius. Um, got a budget meeting on. Um, are we posted for Frontier's budget on the 13th? Oh, for a no. Board? No. 
I didn't even know. Maybe that. we could, and that way we could just give people their Valentine's Day. You know, if we had to talk about something on Tuesday after the Monday meeting. Oh, I just hate I to want to post for Tuesday for this. Is um, you is know, just post. For, if we could, it? It's oh. six six p.m. for the Frontier Budget Meeting. Right. If we just posted a at select the, board over at Frontier here at the library. Yeah, just just in case. You know, I just didn't want everybody to have to meet on. Yeah, that's a good day. idea. I mean, you know, I don't. We're already together. Maybe we'll be able to do this Monday night. Right. But maybe not. Maybe not. Um. But I just want to give people the value. If we're doing the frontier budget on Tuesday, let's post for Tuesday. It's elementary school budget, right? No, no I think separate. Frontier. Frontier. frontier? Okay. I think that's what I've got in here. It could be wrong. Yeah, but that's what I have too. But I. I know Julie's right. got yeah. a calendar of these things, but I, I just I want to say it was the thirteenth. Well, I didn't. Frontier. I didn't have it in my calendar. So unless you um, got it wrong, <laughs> um, let's make sure we get it posted, and then we could make a decision Monday night or Tuesday night, right? And give people their Wednesday night off. Yeah, I mean that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Just wanna. Okay, um, I have Frontier on the thirteenth and you. Deerfield on the fifteenth. Okay, okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, we do need to open the um hearing and um, move it forward for the um, you know um uh, Tim and I have a skims meeting at six o'clock on the 15th okay if no, are you are I'm going I'm, I'll, I'll be, you'll be I'm at the budget committee yeah, yeah. oh so I'll be there anyways okay so you'll be at the want. budget mm -hmm. oh, yeah, okay okay I just want to make sure at yep. least some one of us Definitely. is there at the budget yep um okay. oh and then 5 p.m is the pinning ceremony yeah. yes right. 5, 5 p.m Here, is right? the pinning ceremony yes, yes. yes. and then yep. we're going right into skims and we may be done in time that we to come over to come over, but I'm okay. not 100% sure. No. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do the hearing for the dog. Yes, yeah, so you guys need to open the hearing and yeah. continue it to a date and time certain. And based on what Kevin had mentioned earlier, um, maybe, Chris, tell me if you think I'm wrong. Maybe they could continue, open the hearing and continue it to the 21st at 630 or 645. Do we know if um, Joe Th Thomas Adams, the person that complained, is committed to coming to the dog hearing? Chris, do you uh, have I wrote to him, uh, and he is able to make it on the 21st. Okay. Um, Casey, do we have anything going on at 615 at that meeting? Is there already a scheduled hearing? Well, there's not a scheduled hearing, but Kevin and, jo and John, we're going to try to present if they... I would like to keep that open in case there isn't the ability for the board to make a decision next week. Um, okay, because I, I mean, I can write to reschedule, yeah. but I, I had notified the complainant as well as the subject of the hearing that six fifteen on the twenty first is the right. new time. John, at five thirty or something. Okay. Start a yeah, while. maybe maybe a five thirty start. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine with me. Just to leave it open. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, yes. Let's let's uh, let's let's do um the twenty first at five thirty. Okay. So for the that, hearing. For, uh, no, no oh, for, for John. The, John, we'll do, for Kevin. John and Kevin. And this will be at six fifteen. Yeah, it's six fifteen. Twenty first. Okay. Do you agree um, with this or do you? Yeah. yeah so you need to read it. So, uh, notice a public hearing, Town of Deerfield, in, in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 140, Section 157, and Town of Deerfield Bylaws, Chapter 60, Section 10, the Deerfield Select Board will hold a public hearing on February, uh, well, on February 7th, 2024, at 6.15 p.m. in the main meeting room, the Deerfield uh, Town Office Building, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass., on a complaint of a nuisance dog housed at 477 Greenfield Road. Parties of direct interest are invited to attend and be heard. This hearing will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. For purposes of in-person attendance, the, Deerfield, the town of Deerfield will host the meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass., 01373. Remote participation uh, noted below. There's a toll-free number of 833-548-0276. And uh, if you... If you go on the Town of Deerfield website, you'll see under the calendar a uh, Zoom link to uh, attend this meeting. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580, and the passcode is 570012. So um, call the meeting to order, and I will then make a motion to um, continue the hearing until uh, February 21st, 2024 at 6.15 p.m. Um, so all parties can attend. And I will second that motion. Thank you, Trevor. Is there any further discussion? 
Hearing none, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you. Um, there's just a couple of things I wanted to bring up under Is there another hearing that we have to deal with that we're pushing off, or did that just? No. Oh, okay, good. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, there's just a couple of things. I, I was at that Agricultural Partners uh, meeting and Geosyntec is working on the uh, new watershed plan, um, and that will work into our 604B. And so I'm, I'm alerting Christopher Dunn that we will have a updated watershed plan um, courtesy of MACD to um, use towards our 604B, which is excellent. Um, I just wanna also ask that, um, if there's any possibility that uh, Casey or Chris could write a letter of support for that empowerment bill of the governors. And then also we want to make sure that we submit um, a letter of support for House 2506 and House 41, I mean, Senate 2506 and House 4181, that Senate disaster, the state disaster relief fund right. for Natalie and Joe, because the governor filed one um, a competing bill for having A and F administer the money, and we want MEMA to be administrating the money. The formula, the formulas were not fair to us uh, compared to the amount of money that we have spent. Um, and but do you think it's better through MEMA? Yes, I do, because they will look at actual bills, actual expenditures versus these. Okay. Mystery form. I trust you on that. I don't know. Why well, not? it's huge. So I, I want us to make sure um, we send some kind of a letter saying why we support the bill and and specifically mention the fact that we want MEMA administration versus ANF administration. So um, does MEMA have any delays that ANF wouldn't? Right. Do we get money faster from ANF? Yes. I I I don't believe so. Well, I think the reporting you, that you need MEMA to doesn't do is distribute a money. more, right? MEMA, well, no, MEMA they're, doesn't they distribute money. They they would be distributing in the well, bill. I know, but they haven't done it in the past, so we don't right. have a measurement of how quickly they can right. turn money over. Okay, well, that's, that's all I'm saying. Plus, is there a lot more um, reporting and bureaucratic stuff with MEMA versus getting a check from ANF? You're saying saying no. I, I do not believe so. I think Joe and Natalie's bill is a better bill. Okay, I support. Uh, and you'll know. And the, well, I just no, well, we discussed sure. this on at the Homeland Security meeting. Um, Larry is um is a uh, emergency manager from Cummington, and we were going back and forth on this, and he agrees that we think that Nemo would be a much better administrator of this. Mm -hmm. I and, mean, we I mean we can get more input, but. I, I have to say, having, I mean, how did, how did we end up with 30% of our expenses versus Conway's 110% payment? Yeah. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that's not fair. Right. You know? I'm glad that they got money. I am too. I'm not complaining about right. that. But they're but whole and we aren't. Right. We exactly. only got 30% of our expenditure. Right. That's not fair. Yeah. So I feel like if it's based on actual bills, we'll get we'll get reimbursed. I trust you. Okay. So now, um, the only thing I wanted to ask about that is we've asked them to write a letter. When do we need this letter to be written? Um, uh, it's pretty soon. I think okay. the, it's the end of the month or something like that. Okay. So in other words, we don't know when it needs to be done, but we need it soon. <laughs> well, so that's no. clear direction to you guys. I just want... I just want you to it's, well, I feel what your are we pain. Pick a date. <laughs> it's March first or something like that. It's 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 towards the end of February is when the deadline is. I I just don't know exactly. I can't remember what the exact date is. But okay. we're all set Sorry. with it's Kevin. Not, right? It doesn't mean like fraught tomorrow. I'm just but teasing a little bit. I know, I know. We're all set with Kevin, right? We're not doing any road road work until Monday when we talk with them. Right. Okay. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate it. Um, the only other thing, um, the Long Island Sound money is, I mean, there's $12 million in that, and we, we could access that. And that, so I'm just, I'll work with. Yeah, I mean, the thing is about to access that money, how much work do we need to do? Well, yeah. It, do we have the capacity to do the work. Well, it actually would be the Conservation District doing the work. Okay, there. so if, if we can get somebody to do the work for us, I'm all for it. Great. Yeah. 
I'm just saying that there, it's reported $12 million additional mm -hmm. this week I found out about. Oh, um, good. Sounds great. So we're going to try to work on that. Um, I went to the finance MMA meeting, uh, you know, their little thing that they put on. And um, I, I really feel like the only thing that we really need to work on is our five-year capital plan. And I talked to Mark Brennan about that, and he's going to work on that um, in, the, mm -hmm. in our meetings this in our review. I Thanks. feel like that's the only thing that we're really not addressing adequately. Well, that and uh, OPEB. Well, OPEB. Yeah, but that's all. We know what OPEB is. We need to just put money into it. Okay. We need another person to right. come and convince and, everybody. We need to get Well, and, and Julie, I will come make a complaint right now. Um, you know, 40% of our frontier is school choice. Half of the OPEB commitment is Deerfield's Mm -hmm. You know, this is coming down the line. It is. All right. It's going to kill us. Um, the 350th that we had on Monday, last Monday, um, the time capsule is going to be um, buried out here. Uh, we're in front of where the police police um, cars park, you know, where the bushes are. And there's a granite um, bench and okay. a, um, proposed and a nice landscaping and everything is going to be paid for. Have we thought about that with the change in use here? Well, is that the best spot? That yeah, that is probably going to be that the, we were, were talking. We were thinking about the library, but then we didn't know how our parking lot is going to end up. But we aren't moving. That we have already said we're not moving the police station, no matter what happens. Really? Well, yeah, because if we can't afford to build a police station at this point, well, or it's not in any plan that this. I'm aware. Well, I know, but I'm yeah. just thinking. Uh, I, we're, I'm we're, late to the party, it looks like, but I just feel like I'm nervous about putting it there with well, an unknown like thing safe, going on. It seemed like the safest spot of all the campus because everything is sort of up in the air at the moment. But we were not going to do anything with the police station and every concept going forward, the I police station. one with no police station. Well, yeah, but. That was that was a concept. That, it wasn't a plan. Yeah, all right. Remember? Fun. Yeah. The concept is not a plan. Good right. point too. Um, <laughs> and I, I, I think that anything in front of the library is another logical place to think about it. Yeah. But right. When are they thinking of burying this next week? Well, is it? No, no, no. It's it's going to probably be in June. Okay. At the home. So let's have a little time to talk. But I, but yeah. isn't there already something over in front of the library? I mean, are there, yeah, there's, there's, no, there's a third, three fiftieth yeah. or two fiftieth thing there. I don't know. Yeah, there yeah, is something. Feels like. There is already a market. We ought to put our bury our dead in the same place. Yes, I agree. It's, it's spreading them around. It makes me nervous. Well, then come you to said. the meeting. I'm coming to the meeting. Who knows what else they'll dig up during construction, too? Oh. <laughs> exactly. Um, I also, we had the Kip MVP. Bob Decker, where are the bodies well, buried? Last, last <laughs> week, we had the MVP meeting. And under, we have about 60,000 that's not, that's part of the 2.0 that's available. No match required. And Denise Mason and Lily have come up with um, an AARP grant for access. And one of the things we were thinking of is the culvert towards the elementary school. So between the MVP program, between the AARP, like putting in like a bridge and a rails and all, you know, access over to you mean the between the two two things, we could replace that culvert and also upgrade and the crossing so that people will have a lot you know it would be the start of our walking path right around that the makes area because that so plug that was kind of exciting plugged, that's but... just it's potential okay and um and i did talk to christopher dunn today about the dredging pilot we have a small grant as you know for the uh fluvio geomorphologist to come down and look at bloody brook through the conservation district so he is hopefully going to be able to connect with Christopher and I, and we'll be able to, you know, put in for that dredging project. Okay. For all those playing at pilot, home, pilot. anytime you hear fluvial, <laughs> geofluvial morphologist. Yes, there you go. Uh, EFM for. Um, so anyway, those are, that's the update. Is there any other updates for select board? Um, yeah, I'm going to take like okay. the oh, fast sure. track of, of things. Okay, so, so 1888 building. I'm a in conversation with Warren and Marky's team about what's going on in Washington. And um, <laughs> we received a note from uh, Ed Markey's office that they're still pushing this the next opportunity to know 
the next deadline is March 15th or 12th mm -hmm. um, to see if their Congress is actually going to pass the budget they were supposed to finalize last year. Um, and if not, I'm I'm going to talk to them about, well, if this falls through, should we be writing a new application for the next C congressional directed spending and duplicating it and building in a cost of living increase. Mm -hmm. So I haven't had a conversation yet, but that's one on, on the thing. Um, okay. I'm also asking the ROPM for the library and the 1880 building to give me a revised um, estimate of costs mm -hmm. because they've gone up since last February. Yeah. Um, on the 1821, uh, it looks like Eagle Brook is closing in on being finished uh, with the work they've are doing for us looks amazing um they're going to be the, the the final painting looked like it was going on today they're going to start putting in the the plumbing fixtures in the, the ada compliant bathroom and the two other bathrooms that are going to still be in use mm -hmm. the kitchen has been finalized painting wise um and the floors look amazing oh yeah, yeah it's beautiful they really oh my god i, I think Casey will probably talk about this later. She's she's working on trying to figure out what we can do the, with the 100K, uh, whether the, you know, so we can present something to the BOO. Yeah. Um, she's right. also going to probably report on the 75K and how we're trying to move that feasibility study okay. forward quickly. DCAM, great letter to DCAM about trying to do this under temporary. So Thank you. Um, and library funding, last thing is um, Brenda and had asked that, or Brenda thinks that if, the library's uh, fundraising efforts, if they can give us money, you know, sooner that we might be able to, to delay the time when we start having to ban, mm -hmm. you know, bond good. for this stuff. Yeah. Uh, we this, need to delay till September would be good. Yeah. yeah the, the, for sure. This morning, they're saying that probably it would be, it would be feasible to deliver 640,000 at a minimum. So right. that should give, I don't know what Brenda will Brenda would know yeah. whether that's meaningful or not. Give us some time. Um, but it, it it sounds like it, based on what I think I heard, it sounds like that should help. Yeah. So Good. and um so I've been encouraging them to ask the people who are able to give the money up now. Right. To do it now. Yeah. So that would help it. a lot. Yeah, to push that ban off. Um so I had um we had our sewer meeting today, the um uh, joint meeting. I had to do it from the road up. Casey attended in person, which was great. Thank you for doing that. Um, it's the only one I missed two years, but I was on oh the phone. Gosh, was he, on the was phone. On the phone. he was looking uh, up. But, that was yeah. amazing. But there wasn't much, uh, you know, I mean, really, we're, we're at a slow point right now because they're grinding uh, down the uh, cement and smoothing all the cement out in the in the um, aeration tanks, um, building the the pylons that the, the, the motors go on. Um, and then they're doing the, you know, the gates and all that stuff. So there's a lot happening there, but very minimal compared to what we normally have going on there. And that's probably going to be the case and maybe even lessen up over the next um, February and March. But then by, you know, they're done in May. So they'll be back. They're right now doing the uh, the change order work, the irrigate, the, uh, they got a Very lot good. of the piping work done. So mm -hmm. they're talking about how do we get it done before the next rain? So they've got all that figured out. They got some pumps still in to pump where they need to and all that stuff on the weekend. So, um, so things are, are cooking along there pretty good. Um, and then they're, they're going to be finishing up pretty quick. We're going to be removing some stumps. Uh, we talked about that and, um, but that that project is going to wrap up pretty quickly. It'll be a little slow right now, and then it'll be a big, massive cleanup and and Gosh. and wash down and all that stuff. So, but it, it it looks amazing. I would really like to start planning a uh, an open house for maybe June, something like that. Once the guys, you know, everybody's out of there, it's a little nicer up. weather. We could do some, you know, some a little bit of food out there on the on the driveway or something. Is that, uh, is that totally sanitary? Yeah, it is. It is. It's nice. A clean. It's a very clean facility. So, um, so we could, you know, do it on one side of the building where the air is not misting. Um, mm. And then, uh, but no, I'd love to do people. To, you know, really people to come. I mean, they they yeah. came five years ago to saw the disaster that was there, and I'm so excited to show off the beautiful, beautiful facility, and um, have a talk about how it works and all. So I'll, I'll start working on that at some point. Oh, cool. um, and we do, we got the email, we got to get started on our annual report. I know, I know. Yeah. So, well, um, we can't leave it to the last minute. That was actually one of the last reports we got last year. Yes. 
Yep, yep. We got we got to I know. We gotta it do it together and maybe take a Saturday. I have a meeting Saturday with the boo. Um, so we've been meeting. Um, we've met one Saturday. We're meeting this Saturday to talk over the um, the agreement and uh, things we might want to change, not change, or look at next time. So that's been pretty good. We've had some good good work there and discussion. Oh, it's perfect. Thank you for about that. that. Yeah, Saturday. no, they're they're really um, they're great. Everybody's been for the South good. County. Uh, yes, for the South County Senior, Senior Center, Center. Yeah. we we meet in Sunderland. Anybody's welcome to come. Uh, yeah. But it's just a good working meeting of just kind of going over that agreement, and some other stuff, and that's where we talked about the seventy five thousand and the right. the hundred thousand and how do we use that. Right. I think I think it makes sense to. Use that hundred there. Redo the kitchen. It's always going to be a satellite for our seniors yeah. there, no matter what we or do. Or some structural, whatever you know, yeah. whatever. If if it can only be spent on structural stuff, there's plenty to do. Yeah, no, and, I, and I think pay dividends down the road. Right. Yeah. I think it makes sense, and we just got to check in with uh, Joe on that too. Mm. Yeah. No, we have to check in with Elder Affairs. Yeah. Well, that too, but I didn't I want to give. Yeah, you wanted to give. That. I was working on that, I so I reached out to the grant manager, the contract manager, about that. Okay. Yeah, um, to... she hasn't responded me, to me, but I did reach out to her. I just wanted to keep yeah. Joe in the loop on that. Yeah, she was so instrumental in us getting. Oh, absolutely. Sure we had her oh, blessing. absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, we want to thank her too. Mm. Um, uh, Board of Health updates. Um, I just want to say COVID is still circulating. Obviously, flu's kicking up. Um, at the Homeland Security meeting on Tuesday, the hospitals reported um, the ERs are stacked. And there are no beds available, but um, there's a RSV, uh, all kinds of stuff is it's circulating. So, so please much. stay home if you are sick yep. um, and please be aware and wear a mask if you um, are worried about the um, uh, immune compromised persons. Um, the other thing is map, at the MAPCO meeting on um, Monday, there's a small grant available for equipment for our EDS. And I, I'm I'm thinking that it's you know we're talking like ten under ten thousand so I'm thinking of just putting in for some more signage is that I, unless you guys have better ideas can we still get tests oh no 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 not COVID tests this is for equipment for e, running our EDS oh for our EDS um tests we got a new box in the oh, good. case great um and we have another case of masks. Um, okay. That were dropped off to the um, to Cindy Majeski. Right. So she's taken them down to the senior center. Okay. And um, I think there should be some out there unless yeah. they're already gone. No, that, I, it's been a huge there. help for the community to be able to come and get I, a I few tests for free. Well, the case came in and Cindy was here, and yeah. so the, there was a gentleman, an elderly gentleman looking for some, and yeah. so she handed them right out. It's so I know it's service. I know it's People getting around. Right. But she's. I think she's trying to be a little more judicious than how many she puts out because yeah. some people are coming and taking five or six boxes and right you know that's that's good yeah, they're testing but, it's, but yeah, you need it's to spread bad. the wealth yeah, yeah. you know yeah. so she's putting out new i know she's putting it out when she's here monday wednesday and friday for sure okay um she's restocking but we do have another case and um i did talk to megan she's going to try to get us another case for the end of the month you know or that type of thing yeah so um, do you want me just to put in for signage or, I mean, it seems like there's always a want of signage, but I don't know. I can't think we of anything else. We signs last time. I know. We haven't even used them. I know. So I would say yeah. no. no I, I, I don't think yeah. we need any more signs. We still have signs left over. Yeah. yeah. Half of the half bother. the front of the church is filled up with stuff that Unless I know. we don't have I know. any need I just for. Didn't, I just yeah. didn't know if you uh, If they can, you know, and it. We need any printers or anything like that for for whatever no, we, we do we with have, those CDs. Okay, no, we We're have good. a printer. We have a I brand new printer. Save the money. We don't need to spend it. Okay. All right. Yep. Okay. Moving on. Um, we have to sign the warrant for the presidential primaries. We don't have to take a vote on that, right? We just I don't sign. think so. I, I mean, I we just it's signed. already happened. Yeah. All right. Here. Okay. We just need to sign it. All right. Um, road damage up date um the only thing i wanted to mention we've already talked about it but i do want to uh, mention um and thank chris nolan for um uh, following up on the brick grant as far as we know everything is all set and it's going to go to dc right yeah that is correct i um i sent the last of the changes that had been suggested by shelly to mima yesterday and uh 
am waiting to hear back. The deadline that we needed to submit those was this Friday, so there are a couple of days if she has any additional comments. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate that. Um, thank you again for the uh, following up on her suggestions because it makes us more competitive. This is for the Pine Nook Road. It's a uh, 4.42 million additional dollars to work on Pine Nook. Um, clean Water Asset Management Planning Grants, Stormwater and Sewer Collection System for Review for Match and Contract. We're going to hold approval. one more meeting on that. Um, I talked to Brenda just when I came in, so we'll talked to table. Kevin a bit. Just table it for one more time. I I know where we're going to we're going to pull the money for the from out of the enterprise fund for the asset management plan for the sewer system, the wastewater treatment. Uh, I mean the um, the water um, stormwater grant. I just want to make sure we know where that money is going to come from first. And with all the road stuff, I, I really, I mean, it's it's assessing all of our culverts, all the thing, all of our bad infrastructure, right? So I feel like it makes sense if we have room in that two point four to pull the money from that to do this. I mean, it's we're getting seventy five percent from the state. We're, this is our match. It might be around. 50,000. A lot okay. of it is, you know, paying for uh, police detail and all that stuff as they do all the camera work. So um, it wouldn't be in this fiscal year coming up. I don't, I think it would be, uh, I mean, it's not in the, the current one we're in, but I think in the, yeah, for 2025. Okay. But so just, did we put in a, a capital request for that? No, I don't think, well, did we? I'm trying no. to think. We, we didn't, about we don't have it, a number. We don't think we did. We're, we don't have an, I need a number. We've right. got to have some sort of a and number we don't for a grant. Really have one because you know it is a grant. Can... Um, it's a question of when we think we're going to need to appropriate the money. To. Yeah, and so the reason I'm holding off is I need a meeting with Dave Prickett, Brenda, and Kevin. Okay, and just okay. to kind of nail down all that stuff. Um, and I, we I talk think to we should put in a placeholder for fifty thousand to um capital, capital because we're we're going to start meeting next week. Yeah. Or sometime soon for the asset. Which one? For the for the, for the wastewater, the the other one's coming out of the en the enterprise fund. So, I mean, I don't know oh, you mean you for, one for both stormwater, not wastewater. Yeah, one for stormwater, and then the other one for. I mean, we can put them in for both. I mean, just so everybody understands what we're working on. Well, if, if, if we should put it in for fiscal twenty five, we can show you know if we're going to do any capital. I don't know what we got for money. Right. Obviously, we have to figure out the road situation. But if we're going to do fifty thousand, we should set fifty thousand aside for capital match. Mm -hmm. Right. It's stormwater. Yeah. And I don't think we should mix anything in with the stormwater. That you know, we we have money. If we're going to borrow money in stabilization, then you know, I, I think that it needs to come from stabilization yeah. or yeah. wherever somewhere. Yeah, but I don't build it into the two point four because we're just going to repay that and you know, right. It's next year expense. Yeah. So, but anyway, let's just put it worry. Not, we'll not worry about where we're getting the money from it yet, but we need to put it in there so we can figure it in as, because it will be next year. Mm -hmm. I, I believe like. so. I don't, we're not, yeah, we're not going to do anything this between now and June. Yeah. So well, it and it'll definitely be next year. Okay. So uh, we but, just need to commit and I didn't want to commit until we all knew like, so we're can, good. can you put a placeholder in and just say potential on it? Mm -hmm. And just put that title with the fifty two, and you think it's fifty thousand that. I both? believe it's yeah, fifty thousand for one and fifty thousand for the other because we got two of them. Okay. But I'll and pull you. We'll all get together and have this meeting, Casey, with Brendan, and okay. Dave, and everybody. Yeah, so we all just, know what it we're just doing. needs to be a placeholder. That's all. Just, just to help us out. Maybe we can okay. Do we'll um, see whatever your schedule is like, Casey, and we'll find a time that works. Okay. Um. The next item on the agenda is budget and capital requests. Yeah, and let's annual go through them. articles. So I, yeah, I passed out some budget forms for you. I may not have all of them. I've been uh, working on a couple of things today that were taking up a lot of time. Um, but these, the newest one you'll see is contracted services. So if you want to go step by step, that's the select board salaries thing. Yep, starts with select for salary. I started at the top since you guys had them, but really hadn't voted. Make a motion to double these. Considering the amount of work you do? Well, maybe next year. 
<laughs> you have to survive year to year. Okay. Maybe when Tim's up, we'll ask for it. No, no, <laughs> no, no. All right, two years then, up to wait. Uh, okay. So staff salaries. Um, so do you want to just make a motion to approve these first one here, the uh, select board staff salaries? I'll make a motion to approve the uh, account number 122-5100, select board salaries in the amount of 16000 I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And oh, then another one. Oh, another one. Oh my god. Sorry, I missed that one too. I must be like flaking out here. Um not that late yet. So select board staff salaries. Um I want to pay attention to this one, so let me finish yep. mining. Okay, I'll wait. Oh gosh. What did I I wrote two instead of seven? Mm. These are not um, including colas, right, Casey? They do include cola. Oh, they do include cola. Yes, and that and the cola is everything what? is built on cola. It's two percent. Two percent. Okay. Um, I think this is maybe the only one, but if you sign it, give back to me. I'll check. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, Trevor signed one too. I think I'm. And you got. It. There's a lot of papers. <laughs> okay. All right, so that's the second page, right? We're on. Yep. Select board staff salaries. So, I'm okay with this at the moment. Well, so I, I know we should discuss this, but let's just do a. I'll make a motion to approve uh, account number one twenty two fifty one ten uh, select board staff salaries in the amount of three hundred sixty nine thousand nine hundred forty nine dollars. No, I got. I got yeah. no. Uh, three hundred seventy-six nine seventy-four. There might be new ones on your table. Well, this is that's an old one. This is the packet I got today. Yeah, day, you so. have one that says two seven on the bottom. Let me look. The dates should be two seven. Oh, you, you here's have... one. Here's, yeah, I have mine. Here's it's, this is the two seven. Yeah. Oh, where's oh, is there? I think that's the one. Is this is this this yeah, one? That's back in there. yeah, okay. probably that's back in January. Yeah, okay, so this is crap. This is real. Okay. The, I would, you know what? I'll take mine back. You'll take yours back. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get rid of all this stuff and mind. hide this. Okay. And let me go back to this. All right. <laughs> Starting over. I'll make a motion to approve account number 122 5110 50, select wood staff salaries in the amount of $376,974. I'll second. Um, all those in favor? Nope. No, I want to discuss. Okay. All right. So can can we just run through sure. so that we understand what's gone up and, and why? And does it make sense to Casey's probably the most familiar with this? Mm. Can you run it down for us, Casey? Um oh, no, no, no. I think that's a bit. No, bit. that's this was that's I was one? oh no, I'll just stay with these guys. Got the right ones. That is a great one. Um, okay, so the pay rates you're going to see um, incorporate the COLA of 2% for bylaw employees. Um, the town administrator is based on the contract, so that's already built into it. Mm -hmm. um, what we did do, there was a slight reduction in part-time administrative support. Um, and a zeroing out of overtime for the administrative assistant. We've been trying to manage that, particularly around moderating meetings because right. the entire staff group does that now. That's, pretty, um, that's a lot of work. It is a lot of work because we still have remote and hybrid meetings. So that's what we try to do is balance it as best we can. Um, and you'll see step increases for the, by, like I said, the bylaw by -law employees. Um, <clears throat> and really, this reflects the the compensate the classification compensation plan step increases and cola increases. Yep. Like I said, those colas are built into that plan. So, okay. 
so um i'm not ready to vote i i i, I want us to, to i want wait. us to look at the the, the assistant ta position and and okay. uh, and look at what the you know the remuneration is so um, we can hold on it yeah, yeah i'm fine with that yeah um otherwise I don't see anything that jumped out to me. No. The, well, the only Total question work. I had is, um, do we, because we have um, everybody back full full time, do we need to put in the part time administrative support at all? I think they're doing. We do. We still need minute support. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I, that's one thing. In a year, I would love to have AI be able to do all that, mm -hmm. but we're not there yet. Actually, Christopher's investigating. Or Chris awesome. Nolan is investigating. Yeah, I yeah. think that's going to yeah. help us in the long run, but for right now. Okay. No, yeah. it's fine. We, right. we still have, have to do a lot of the work. And then there's other stuff that people come in and help. Right. Special right. project right. work. So I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I'm not, I'm not I mean, yeah. saying that we. I don't know that we're at the point where we need to talk about um, making changes, dramatic changes to the budget. Right. Yeah. When are, when are we um, actually? We're not on the next bin. We are. You guys are on our Monday? Yeah. Okay. Black board budgets are on the agenda for Monday. For Monday. Yeah. All okay. right. All right. And if you've got offline comments, um, Tim, I'll share them with you. Yeah. Reach out. Um. So legal. So is that legal? so select board uh, select board expense. Oh, select we board expense. Really Sorry about that, but we made some. After this past two years, our meeting costs have gone up. Our training costs are going to go up. Um, certainly routine things like postage has have yeah, gone up. So you'll see those things reflected yep. in this change to the select board administrative administration expense. Um, and staff expenses up because we have more staff. We have more staff, but we also we have, have you know, we have to make sure that everybody can get done the things they need to get done. Dues went up slightly, same reason. Um, but we held miscellaneous things at, I think is the same rate as been there for a long time. And emergency planning is the same rate as well. Um, so. I, I just wanna say that we do try to take advantage of every free training. I mean, I sign up for stuff all the time. But we, do. we need a little bit of money for um, some of the, I mean, the state is just requiring us to have so many more trainings. That, yes. Uh, I, you know, so in order for us to be able to process, we need more. Yeah. Training. And, and I also feel like some of the human resource trainings that, you know, are not free are worth it to us because it tries to save us money in the long run. So, uh, you know, so I, so I think justifying going from 3,000 to 4,000 is really, you know, that is a correct move because well, we have ultimately, staff too. yeah, but okay. it also saves us money. You know, you don't, you don't, if you don't have trained, if you're not, if you don't know what's going on, then professional development is important money. for staff. It yeah. allows us to better perform. Yeah. So I'll make a motion to uh, approve 122, 5,400 uh, select board and administration administrator expense at 21,200. Second. All those in favor? MLG aye. Chairman McDaniel aye. Carolyn Ness aye. Could I ask a question yep. about that? Can we change the title of that? Because sure. it isn't just the administrator, it's the administration's office. Yeah, that one of the training. Do that? So I would, I, I think it better reflects sort of some Select equity in the office. And administrator, administration. administration. That's really how we. Yeah. That's how uh, what yeah. we do. It encompasses a lot more than just yeah. one person. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's done. I think the next one is legal. Yeah, legal. Um, so I mentioned this before, but I'll legal. mention it again. Yeah. Um, we reduced uh, litigation expense in the hopes that we can clear some of that. We've cleared some, but not all. Yeah. Um, admin costs have gone up, so. And that's, that's literally the rate. Yes, the rate's up. gone up. Um, but what we did, one thing, one of the reasons that we were trying to make adjustments um, in those two line items is because the other item is labor council and employment. Why is that? That's increased because we have contracts. All our contracts are up. 
which police i was cbas right. yep they're all up next year okay because so, we yeah we negotiated them and then we talked about it a long time before they got approved and then they were retroactive were part of them retroactive? Uh, there was one highway was yeah. highway That's was a bridge contract yeah. and then it was a three-year yeah. okay so, so make, we anticipate a higher expense there i'll make a motion to approve illegal expense 51 uh five one 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 five one five three hundred at one hundred and five thousand. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchard, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And IT hardware, we increased, I talked to Brenda about this. We increased it by a thousand dollars. Um we need to make sure we can keep up with the needs in the office. Um some I think the last two years we've been pretty tight. Okay. Um, so um, for purpose of discussion, I'll make a motion to approve account number 155-5400 IT hardware in the amount of $6,000. Uh, okay. I'll second that. All those in favor? Just a quick question. Oh. So what is this? Is This is like, do you need a this laptop? This covers replacement right. equipment, IT and, replacement equipment. And the actual equipment. The actual, the actual yeah, computer. the actual like if I need help from entree, that's kind of that's in services. contracted services. Thank you. Okay, I'm ready. All those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Kevin McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Okay, this one's got a lot on it. And this one's got a lot on it. This, this is contracted the... services. I held off on this one because I needed some more information. So there's some key pieces to this. Where are you? Uh, where's where's contracted services? Oh, maybe it's not in my book yet. Okay. It's, 150, it's not in your book yet. Yeah, 159. So I'll make a motion to, for, for purpose of discussion, I'll make a motion to approve account number 159.54.10 contracted services in the amount of $273,614. So there's some key pieces that have changed here. Um, and one number may have a change a later on. I'll second that. Okay, sorry. Now I'm, I'm back to you, Casey. Sorry. Um, I didn't realize there wasn't a second. Um, so there's some key pieces that have changed here. Um, and we may see a change in the number for network maintenance and IT Down? support. No, uh, it depends. It's gone. And I'll tell you why. Way up. It has. Here's the issue. Double what it was. We need to it. increase our cybersecurity. And one of the reasons we... One of the ways we can do that is make our um, Microsoft Office suite and particularly Outlook more secure by using a different type of license. Mm -hmm. So that's out there as an unknown. I did speak to Entree about it. They're supposed to be trying to get me quotes for something that's mid-range, but is a little more secure than what we have now. In other and, words, a government license if we qualify for it, but there's some question as to whether we would I or not. Just want to make Which seems counterintuitive to me. So the question that we do because the sometimes the way government define is defined uh microsoft doesn't always uh, doesn't always address recognize that i should say can i can i chris can i just ask you um what on that cybersecurity grant that we got what does it encompass training so the cybersecurity grant is focused on training um it it, it will provide free no cost training uh, from the state through a prescribed program that we're going to be making sure that staff complete on a certain schedule. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there's no software, no additional no. help, or or do you think this? I it was my assumption that there was like different levels of cybersecurity grants. So if if you did this first training, then you were able to be eligible for the next pot of money. That's not my understanding of it. Um, my understanding is that it's it's preventative in nature. So I, I think it overall will be good for our finances in the long run because yeah, if our yeah. but, but I, right. But the state makes you get this one first, this preventative one, before you're eligible for the software one. Um, I don't know of any prescribed tracks like that, but I, I think we definitely could be more competitive uh, for other grants that relate to cybersecurity if. It's been shown that we have a track record of taking it seriously with our staff. Right. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure for thirty six thousand that we're getting enough services from an entity. So, what do you want to know? I just want to know, like, 
So where they come to us monthly, they come to the office monthly and any problems or questions we have, they address them when they're here. If they can't address them, they get back to us. Um, we, I meet with the gentleman that covers our office, Kevin, um, when he comes in generally at least once when he comes in, um, they do, they've screened our equipment and made recommendations, both capital and contracted services related that we need to address, which part of which is in here and part of which you will see separately. Um, I think in terms of responsiveness, my experience, and maybe you can tell me if I'm wrong, Chris, but my experience of how people are getting response, it's a lot faster than it was. Oh, I agree with that. That's You're spot on. Aren't hiccups. Say that again, Chris. They respond. <laughs> I just said you're spot on. Yeah. yeah, they respond. They respond quickly and they help us solve the problem. That's not not to say that we didn't get solutions from the previous company. It just the experience has been a little bit different for staff. Um, I just want to I don't know. I don't know how to give you a measurement, except I'm just that wondering I think how we're having... many other companies, what they charge, that kind of thing. Are we are we in a comfortable space like related to other companies and what they charge for the same service i think we would have to go out to bid for that um which we can do the issue is is you're not going to know what that cost is until no, i'm not, not asking you know right it's now, a monthly think, fee we do pay we a monthly fee uh, at some point look at that but okay moving on i i think you've got to the yep. board has to direct Understand. me and Chris no, to, I know. to do something like that, You're, which we can do. It covers a lot. That and I, I'm not saying it, it. I'm not even saying it's it's the wrong number. I'm just always so concerned. it's basically three thousand a month. Yeah. Um. No, what this is is it's it's less than three thousand a month. It's oh, because I mean network it, maintenance. But is, there's also this element of if we have additional work, we we try to Brenda and I try to build in a little bit there okay. in case we have additional work. Mm -hmm. Um, that's off, that's not part of the monthly contract, monthly mm -hmm. support. It does happen occasionally. Um, we were spending a little bit more with the previous company in terms of what that meant. Copier rental is relatively static. Um, consultants, we left the same. Mm -hmm. Grant MVP consultant, we left the same as the year as FY24. Is that paid for out of something else? Like that's not the, I mean, we certainly pay a lot more for the MVP consultant than $10,000. That's what's in here. Um, well, no, I know. No, it's offset, most of it's offset by the grant. Okay. But this covers? That covers some of it. So it doesn't I, cover all of it. I'm, I'm not sure about the, the MVP 2.0, whether, whether, oh, Wayne Feiden mm -hmm. and Christopher Curtis are both being paid for from that grant. Part of it. Part of it. Okay. Yeah. So we're paying this is, part. This is, it's a match. Like the match. Yeah. Okay. Match. And it's only 10. It's only 10. That's what we start at. If we have to have other funds then we have to. If, if we appropriate to do a project like a culvert or something, then we, this has to be increased obviously. Cause there is a match always with the MVP. It's not, mm -hmm. nothing is free, but we, this is more of a less of a, uh, um, like you can see the difference in the year 22, it was seven. Mm -hmm. And then we went 23, the, we had upped it to 25 because we were knew what we were going to have to pay. Mm -hmm. And then, it, but this with, was all grants and the MVP consulting. Yeah. This is for the whole. So thing. we decreased it. Okay. Somewhat. Yeah. We're doing the 2.0 process. And right now there's no grant requirement match. It's a hundred percent paid for. Mm -hmm. That's everything. what I was yeah. Okay. And we have actually sixty thousand dollars sitting in the um that we get we got from the two point oh process that there's no match required. Okay. So we have to decide, you know, a seed grant or mm -hmm. I mean that's why I was saying we can match it up with the AARP one and right, you know, have this fancy, you know, uh, area to go, you know, cross Bloody Brook to mm -hmm. the school. So or something like that. I mean, that's, but I think to put, in, to zero it out just because we're going through the 2.0 process doesn't, 
is not and practical. This is one of those things that if we don't use it, does it go back? Yeah, it rolls rolls back. It rolls, yeah, it just or whatever we you just set it out on this. Uh, on this just goes to free budget. cash at the end of the year. Um, so what in the Simmons contract, Simmons, yeah, well, Siemens, that, yeah, the Siemens contract is done has with a. That? Set increase. Mm -hmm. And anybody, I, I, we ask this every year. When is it over? <laughs> I can't remember honestly. I can't I'll remember either. But try to that's the last that time we get yeah. Yeah. by those guys. Okay, um, I think we still have a ways to go. I do. I think we have a ways to go on it, but don't quote me. Um, King King file service. We reduced, although we do have to do some work you in have, the administration office. It's lot. not just our office, but down the hall too. Yeah, we have a lot of need. Um, we need some serious file organization down the hall. So you up training um, and training and development. There's a reason we uh, I I discuss it with Brenda. I think we need to do some um several types of training, including you know discrimination training. There's a lot of training that we might be able to take advantage of free sources, mm -hmm. but specific training often does not have a free source. Right. So this, if the board wants to reduce it. I don't have a problem with it, but if we end up having a need and can't afford it, but really should be doing it, that's my caution. Well, let's you know. look at it at the end. You know, we can come back to it. You can later, come back to it and reduce it yeah, later. I, I, I see where the like overall a, budget is. I was just going to say. Put a star just, next to it. Yeah. Yeah, I've already got it marked. Yeah. 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 I, I, I feel like then that's not a smart way to make our cuts, but. Yeah, I know. It's training, so it's good. Then the land, uh, the so solar. We, we did increase the landfill solar consulting. Well, we're in the middle of trying to start that, restart right. that process yeah. because finally the interconnect agreement has been signed. And Beth will be doing more work. And on Beth that. is starting to do more work on it. In fact, Beth and I had a conversation about going through the first iteration of information they provided, which relates to pilot, mm -hmm. but there's a next. Um, there's a next section that we're going to have to deal with, and that's the effect of the lease payments because yeah. they're a one for one true up. Um, and there's some evaluation and analysis she's going to have to do. So she actually asked me to set a meeting up with her and Karen so we can talk about it. Um, so we put a little bit more in there, not knowing what we may need. So Comcast, you came down yeah, yes. before we move on to Comcast. Oh, um, Comcast came down due to the excellent efforts of Pat Kroll to negotiate okay. something that is much more user-friendly for us. So on the, on the solar, going back to the yep. solar, um, next amp, has this got anything to do with the lease discussions? Um, it's both pilot and the lease discussions okay. because there's there's data that goes with either one, right. but they end up they end up being trued up between the two agreements. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, you know, I understand that NextAmp is asking us to talk talk about what's in the lease agreement. So are we going to have a public meeting on that at some point? You're going point? to have to, but we aren't there yet. Yeah, okay. we, we need, they want, they wanted to have a meeting with you. We need this analysis and then Good. we need to discuss. Perfect. Thank you. Discuss this with town council. So yes, yeah. there is a process. All right. Excellent. Is, uh, is the website stuff um, charged to get somebody to <laughs> So here's the issue, and I've been following my uh, MAPO discussions. My There's regular incremental increases in the contract. Um, if we need additional work or additional support, we have to build that in. Um, I've been looking, since I was looking for a bunch of things, I've looked at a lot of websites. Ours isn't the worst. It may not be the best, but it isn't the worst. Um, when you can't find somebody's bylaws on a website, that's not good. Right. At least you can find our bylaws. I mean, I, there's a lot of things you can find. For what They're, I use it for, it's fine. But I know that people have not. People don't. Okay, so here's the issue. Even I do this. It depends on the search term you use. If you're using a search term that's recognizable yeah. in our documents, it pops up. Sometimes we don't. When I do this on Google, it, the same thing happens to me. So mm -hmm. in terms of the website, this is what it's costing us right now. If we want to go out for an RFP for no we can do that um it's there's a transition though like with any software yep. package there's the transition for that so okay. right now this is our best estimate okay um and then uh so let's talk right. about telecommunications you see a, a wow. pretty big increase there and the yeah. reason you're seeing a pretty big increase there is because our phone systems are failing right they were installed in 2008 
Yeah. And we are starting to see interruptions in calls. That usually isn't enough to cover a new phone system, is it? So it's a subscription system. We got a oh. quote from Normando. I had Christoph Chris Nolan and Pat investigate not only the quote, but other options. Is it and voice over IP? It is voice over IP. It makes me a little nervous. You know why? Well, because if the power goes out, you don't have a phone. So we would we actually had a conversation about that, keeping one line. Yeah. Um, because we could do that for yeah. that well, we reason. We have a backup generator, Trevor. But, but we've got a backup generator and we use Comcast now. Mm -hmm. So I think it's it's a reasonable increase so based who, on the who fact would that you it was subscribe to. So we would subscribe to a product provided like, by Normando. Like and that. we did some investigation. I'm a little I'm more confident on this than I was maybe two weeks yeah. ago because Chris and Pat helped me so much with it. But this is within a certain the sound business practices of procurement. Um it provides us with the phones themselves, mm -hmm. the service. Um it there's so there's a monthly price. There's the general installation price yeah. and then there's the monthly fees and all of that's encompassed in okay. the 7300 um and it also allows us to eliminate some of the support that we were paying for so what you see for that 1500 from last from this fiscal year mm -hmm. um we could reduce that which keeps us well under ten thousand dollars okay so I'm sorry it's, I don't... it's more but it's not as much as it could have been i don't understand um, you just said something about some other line item that was reduced. Oh. So if you look at this line item, right? fiscal year 24 says 1500. It says, uh, That's it says really a for support. It says 1000. The one before that was 15. So, so 23. Is yeah. it's, it's really for support. Mm -hmm. All the support, if we go with this new system, all the support's included. Okay. Unless we have a really special event. And yeah. so does the spending this more here does it decrease someplace else or it doesn't it okay. gives us a new phone system which right. if we had to buy one yeah, yeah. would be well over fifteen thousand dollars and it's old technology this is new technology and this Travis point would this be an annual 7300 going forward or whatever the it might is. be reduced yeah. um but annually we can expect to pay the subscription service right um, more like five or something a year. Right, mm -hmm. like that. right because it wouldn't have the initial setup stuff right and they're okay. responsible for hardware if it breaks right that. Okay. So, Sounds like it makes sense. It, it makes sense. It's not, I'm not happy that we have to do it on the other hand. Yeah. It, it doesn't, in this case, we are within a certain framework of procurement that gives us a better system. And you don't have to go through capital. It's not big enough for, you know, right. you have to go through capital right. if you're doing a And I think this system. is the general technology that the private sector is using too. Now, the Zoom, do you think that's... Um, you know, do we with changes coming? Are are we going to need more Zoom accounts, or is that for us? So we're that? trying to balance that. Lily Dwight has been really I know. helpful she's, by she's allowing us donating. to use her accounts. Absolutely, I have a private account too. If we have, if we run into an issue like that, yeah. Um, that's the reason we have an increase. I got the private account um for myself, really, but yeah. I allow the town to use it when we need it. Uh, last year because we were running into that during budget season. So what we try, and I give Pat and Chris a lot of credit, know, we try to manage it as best we can. And you saw it the other day when we had like four meetings. Yeah. Um, we really had to stick to timeframes, mm -hmm. but realistically, I think we just keep going ahead with, Zoom, right. with two Zoom accounts. If it changes, we will certainly discuss it. Yeah. Okay. Um, soft rights up a little bit. Soft rights up a little bit. And at some point we are going to hear from Sarah and Brenda, certainly I will help them. I was checking into this at the MMA conference about where they may want to go because right. eventually soft right is not going to be supported. I know. So we're going to have to make a change. Yep. But right now we're not there. Okay. Now, is that something that the suite of software, is there any component like in the planning software company that we're working with that has an accounting? Um. I haven't checked into permit it permitize, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I haven't I checked into them. Usually there's like five vendors yeah. for financial software mm -hmm. in the state. Yeah. Because right. it's yeah. it's kind of related to what the state requirements D yeah. are. DLR. Yeah. Um yeah. there may be options. I actually spoke to a vendor that I'm familiar with from when I worked in Ashfield mm -hmm. who has broadened their software offering. And I told Brenda about it, but I think we need to get some 
understanding of what that looks like now. Mm -hmm. And we could probably do that over the summer. Right. I don't know where we're going to be with that. The sewer utility billing. Um... That's an offset. So that comes oh, out of the it. sewer. Right. It comes out of the wastewater treatment. That's fine. Yeah. Um, I was wondering why that is. sewer just... enterprise fund. The maps. And that's the really for the utility billing that allows us to do the sewer bills. Weights and measures. Weights and measures is up. Yeah, Weights and measures is up. And I asked for confirmation from them because we have a contract with them now and that's the mm -hmm. contract price. I think last year we paid 4,500. I'm willing to not, and I talked yeah, to Brenda about this. For a year. We can knock it down, but if it comes to it and they yeah. enforce the contract that they asked us to sign, okay. this would be the price. Well, if you want me to reduce it to the 4,500, I'm no, happy to I mean, do that. Should, what, it makes sense it for is. me. Yeah, what, I don't understand it, that they can come back to us. and. and well, we have a contract that specifies that amount. But and yet last year they only charged us 4,500. So they may not have implemented the changes. When did we do the contract? Do you remember? They requested it. Oh. They requested it. it. So division of uh, labor standards? Yeah. Division of, no, not labor standards. Weights and measures. Wait, it's, it's within a larger um, yeah. secretariat. So uh, this is something we're paying to the state? Yes, we pay the state to come out and do our Checker. weights and measurement um, mm -hmm checks at gas stations anything that's got a scale really yeah mm -hmm. um okay. that where there's a retail connection where somebody's for instance weighing you know cheese gravel so, gravel uh, whatever oh, oh okay so i understand so but they charged us 4500 last year they charged us 4500 well, last year when i and i was doing the investigation so i could be correct here um brenda Let's questioned see. me about it so, so I can reduce it to 4,500 and we'll see what happens. Well, well I don't think, I haven't seen probably. that increase except yeah. to see it in the contract. Well, no, it's 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 too little amount to worry right. about. Yeah, but, uh, just keep it in there. And if I get roll, a change, if I get a confirmation of 4,500, I will change well, it's, it. Right. Right. 2024 says 4,800. So right. um, whatever, yeah. You so we'll just been anticipating. A, we'll make a note that this could change. Yep. Yeah, and just, you know, I'll leave it in there because yeah, it I'm waiting to see if somebody responds. Just roll back to free cash, if, mm. you know, if they only charge us the forty five or forty eight, whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. I just didn't understand that that was a contract price. It's actually a contract, and I I went back and I reviewed it because I remember them asking, um, and I didn't, you know, maybe they everybody pushed back. It's like. How can you do this yeah. to us? Right. And they do give us, so at the end of the fiscal year, they give us a report of all the activity they've done. Right. Um, because they, we actually charge the permit holders that have to go through this. We charge a fee for that to try to make this, some of this back. Um, so it is, a, so it, to try to make it a pass through, but I haven't looked at those documents in a mm -hmm. while. I would need to talk to Pat. And all right. So, so well, there's what's it? The FCAP, 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 FCAP stay the same. Just pass through. Yeah. Pass through from That's a pass through. We try, we, you know, we try to do that, or at least yeah. we had been trying to do that. Um, but process is something that I we usually talk about this when it comes up in a budget, unless there's a problem. Mm -hmm. All right. So all those in favor? So we're approving this conditional conditional approval. Yeah. 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 Okay. We'll come back and so, visit if we have to. Tim LG, I. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn Ness, I. I mean, anything is gonna. We're gonna come back and look. Yeah, at yeah. It. I, I mean, I that, that's yeah. that's the finance committee made a point to say that. Yesterday. Yeah, they're they're doing the same. At right. their meeting, yeah, so for sure. Yeah. We'll all be circling back around to anything that changes. I make a motion to approve account number one seventy nine five four hundred. Second. Uh, uh, Agriculture Commission at one hundred dollars. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hill, G. I. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn Ness, I. Okay. Make a motion to approve account number one nine two fifty four thirty in the amount of seventeen thousand dollars town of office expense. Um I guess seven twenty four. Uh which one was that again? I'm sorry. Uh, uh office expense. One ninety two fifty four thirty town office expense. Okay. Uh yeah, promotion. Yeah, we've got we've got a lot going on this year. Election. I can explain it if you want to second no, so we can good. so you can move Elections, to discuss all that stuff. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. 
So really the, the key pieces are we reduce town reports and publishing costs have gone up. Yep. Those are the, the, those are the biggest changes. We did have a slight increase of supplies, but we're experiencing the need. Mm -hmm. General insurance, which is your next one. Um, Brenda and I talked about that. We under budgeted last year, so you're going to see an increase here. Yeah, it was overspent by five last year. Right. Um, <laughs> Taking on another building. So corresponding yep. changes. The estimate was about ten percent. Okay. Um, corresponding, and that is reflected in both the numbers, which is both general insurance and IOD, um, injured on duty insurance, which is a separate policy. Um, we do try to get credits, and so you know, Tim at the meeting at the MMA conference had reached out to Maya mm -hmm. and asked them about what was going on. And we have been getting the credits. The issue has been Maya has not been um, sending us the checks to offset that because Brenda has a certain process she does. Um, so she, Tim is, Tim helped me connect so that we can further explore that. And then Brenda and I are going to talk about it. Mm -hmm. She was doing cash stuff the last two days so. yeah and yeah I have, this also sort of came up because christopher dunn was just looking and he told me that Maya you know, that maya didn't have any credits for us and i didn't know if that was important or not and so it then is we, important then we, it yeah. is yeah then and we, so that's the that's the thing when we go to the mma yet. conference i try to pick and we all Colin and i used to talk about this a lot is pick um we the seminars sure. that we can get credits yeah for. i signed up on the yep. app and did the thing in the, yep. Yep. In the room. So yep. it should be. So we did that this okay. year too. All um, right. So you want to make a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve. Which one was that? General again? insurance. Oh, yeah. Make a motion to approve general insurance um, at um, 78000 for account 196-5400. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. This is conditional on having Casey there to Casey and Brenda there to explain why these the are, yeah why these yeah. are happening. Okay. Um, oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm making a, a motion to approve um, account number two ninety one fifty four hundred emergency management in the amount of twenty eight hundred. I I also just would I'll second this for discussion. Yeah. I want to make sure that we um we write the directive to counting to process this stipend because i'm not sure it's been processed yes it has it has i process it you quarterly do. yes okay <laughs> i was under the them. i was under the impression that it hadn't at one point but that maybe that was like a year ago or something we like caught that. up with it okay mm -hmm. perfect yeah that's good so this yeah, is brenda it, and i talked about that does yep. this go to the emd yes yes okay yeah okay and it's paid out quarterly that's perfect thank so, you yeah thanks I, for the work i put no i have notes in my that's great in my I knew I had it back here somewhere, this. and I need to remember to, for tomorrow. <laughs> remember to talk about it. So, okay, good. All those in favor? Um, all those in favor, yes. Yeah. LGI. Right. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn, no, sorry. All right, let's talk about the ADA coordinator. Oh, Kevin's still yes, here. Can, can we do the, uh, can we do that stipend? That never gets paid either. So here's the issue. It's never been paid out as a stipend, and we get intermittent requests for to fix issues. We had this conversation um, with finance recently. And the question was, why do we have it? Can we eliminate it or reduce it? So I took that back to Kevin. He wasn't at the meeting that day mm -hmm. um, and asked him about how we could make a change to this. And Brenda suggested maybe incorporating it into a different budget. Realistically, ADA and accessibility questions are usually related to buildings. So I talked to Kevin and I think he's okay with this. We could put this into the building maintenance account and reduce it to $100. But understand, if something were to come through that we had to pay more money for, we That's would just, have to pay for it. It's 250 bucks. It's not it's worth the It's not a huge but, amount of money, but it, it seemed like finance wanted to eliminate it. It doesn't matter. I, I think um, it's fine. I do think we should move it, though. I think we should eliminate a separate account and put it into Well, I just want to make sure that it um, that it meets all the, you know, the USDA grants and all the loans and stuff we've done. I, I just want to make sure that this is 
bold somewhere everybody understands that we have an ADA coordinator and they function. Yeah, we have an that. ADA coordinator and we publish that information. It's just really the ADA stuff that this is related to. It says coordinator, but I don't think they ever paid it as a stipend. No, they don't. I don't know because it's if never it, been directed. If direct you want to it to be a stipend, then you guys make a policy change for that. Yeah. And then we pay that. I wouldn't pay it. Technically, right now, the, the town administrator is the ADA coordinator. But a lot of that work gets done with the public work superintendent right. because he helps me you immensely. Do it and together. so does Bob. You do it together. We do it together. Yeah. So to to some extent, it's more of an expense in our minds, right? Um, because two fifty is we recently it. had an ADA complaint that we had to settle, and so it's costing us just a little bit of money to do the signage, to, yeah, for the cost of the signage. So right, you know, and we don't have the bill yet, just so everybody knows. So just for purpose of discussion, I'll make a motion to approve uh, count number five forty nine fifty four hundred ADA coordinator in the amount of two hundred and fifty dollars. Second. All those in favor. Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Oh, no, sorry. Um, group insurance for the school. That's in your book, isn't it? Oh, I, I don't, don't have, have anything group insurance. else. I'm done. I have the one I have is from. Uh, you have so you seconds. have some budgets that Brenda prints it out for you guys. Yeah, both Carolyn and Trevor. Tim, your budgets you got from Monday. Yes, those those are printouts that I made. Right. Um, the budget you have Monday reflects some of what they're, the two of them are seeing in a different package. So what what is uh, yeah, under our pur too. purview is is chapter one, correct? What? Say that. All again. the budgets in chapter one we need to approve, correct? School That's budget. general government. It's yeah. general government, but some of them are not. If you guys do this jointly with the finance committee, you're going to come back to them. Because you guys are going to have to. Well, vote we haven't things. really voted anything because there's been like one or two of us at the meeting. So, so. if you want to do that, I mean, it's good do, to meet you with will them. need to vote them. We will need to go through all these at one point. I mean, I, I guess we don't have to do it. You want to start doing it now? The no, that's fine. I, I mean, it's okay. The meeting's long enough. No, I, I will be there on Mondays from now on. Okay. I, I just, I had conflict. No, we all, meeting. we all do. Yeah, different times. That's um, why we're, you know, thanks to Julie and Chris, we're making sure that you guys are posted. Um, yeah, so that you can take on. votes because yeah, I have seen the board take votes at previous meetings. Yeah, I I will be there for now. So, I just had the conflict. well, we can come back. And well, I have these another next conflict. Time, then. You know, the next three fifty. All right. Well, I I actually are these are these um like council on aging or is that all? That's all. Um, that's fifty four. We're just gonna... some of these are packets from previous days. Right. Yeah. But yeah, we can come back. I've updated my book. Uh, that's. I'll just make sure that. So that printout take to take with you to be your yeah. book. Okay. All right. So are we done? Yeah. Anything else tonight? on that? No. Agenda. And nothing else from that printout. Okay. Um, what was this? What What was this town of Deerfield detail expenditures with pending? Oh, so that was Board of Health. That's Board of Health expenses to date. And it okay. looks like, I mean, we're, we're cruising right through that um, yes. Board of Health agent. I mean, we're at 68% already, and we still have another six months, five months to go. Well, part of it is because um, Valerie's been working at twenty between 20 and 25 hours. Right, so we're going to need a, a, a transfer. But, well, uh, there might be enough money left over in other line items that at, towards the end of the year we can do an inner uh, department transfer. We'll have to look. Yeah, it's going to be, I don't there'll be enough somewhere well so Brenda, Brenda I told Brenda to give um, let me know we when she we feels like we're getting yeah. close because yeah, we're going to have to make the change I mean, I mean, one's this way and one's this way okay you want it the, yeah. um, we're, we're over yes we can do that I'm going to have to go in and fix it yeah it was only 5,000 so we have $500 left over that's not going to we still have an infectious disease line item. I mean, I hate to use it down to zero because that's our money for rabies, but right. But that usually rolls over every year. Do do we do okay. we take, make a motion? Um, for what to adjourn? Oh, are oh, we yeah. done with the? I don't know. Are we done? That's no. Well, no, no, no. no because, that's what I'm asking. Uh, we we got to do the appointment, right? We, we yes, have you have an appointment. That's uh, have you have Larry lot updates and you have the appointment. Oh yeah, we forgot. And we have Chris's and, and Chris's. Casey's report. Yeah. Okay. So, well, let's rock and roll. Yeah. So um, I'll, let's just do a Larry Lot update. Chris, do you have anything for us? 
Sure. Before I started on that, um, there wasn't a discussion on minutes. I know I had sent out some June 14th, oh, 2023 oh, minutes. No, if that's What's my fault. Off? Good I catch, Chris. I skipped it. Um, no worries. I make a motion um, to approve of 6 14 23. I'm going to read it. All right. Why don't you, while you're reading it, Chris, why don't you update us? Sure. So, my updates on the Leary lot um, we are continuing to await correspondence on project funding from a federal grant. Uh, I've been following up pretty regularly. I've been a big thorn in the FHWA's side, uh, trying to get just any paper that we can um, in terms of getting that contract ready and having it be official. Um, so that's coming along. Uh, there's going to be a webinar that I have to go to soon in order to become part of that process. So yeah. Um, I've been working with Rivermore Energy as well as Berkshire Design Group. Uh, we have a meeting on Friday uh, that Casey and Christopher are also going to be at, um, and we're going to be finalizing some of the details. Um, Rivermore has made certain recommendations, just small adjustments to the design of the overall lot, um, just to make it more uh, pedestrian friendly, as well as improving uh, stormwater drainage, because both of those are really important. And we feel in light of the new budget information that they're both feasible to make some slight adjustments to that wouldn't require a lot of permitting, um, if any permitting at all. Uh, crosswalks with flashing signals across North Main and Elm are one of them. And then in terms of the stormwater improvements, uh, it's just some minor sloping of the asphalt so that the stormwater is directed towards the site's uh, green stormwater solutions like the MVP funded tree box filters and the rain garden, for instance. Um, something that Rivermore wanted me to check in with the three of you on is uh, how receptive we are as a whole toward uh, these recommendations and if if we're okay with taking the time to get a few of them factored in or if we really just kind of want to move forward um i i think since we're waiting for the federal grant to come in let's factor them in i mean that's okay. okay yeah and and you know the the thing about i'm not sure when they're talking about directing water and porous pavement how do they do that if they don't put a pipe in good question so um just having the pavement sloped a little bit uh, can have the water rush towards the green areas yeah. um, and the pavement is still porous obviously so it's it's going to take the bulk of it um, yeah. but but by helping with the capacity of it and, and taking just a little bit of the load off of it um, we, we think that it could potentially reduce the amount of maintenance that would need to get done on it to to take in the storm water especially with the volatile and unpredictable amounts that we've been getting and what how's Jeff feel about these tweaks uh, Jeff is fine with them. He he hasn't raised any concerns to me. Um, okay. We're I've made it clear that we we aren't in the the game of making major changes. Uh, we've already gotten the site plan approved by the planning board. Uh, conservation reviewed it, found that they they didn't need to have any input yet. But we we want to be mindful and cautious that we're not expanding anything to the point where they would need to be involved. Um, and I think we're we're good where we are with that. Also on the Leary lot, the EV charging, uh, the existing one, the rate has been adjusted from 75 cents to 30 cents a kilowatt hour. I double checked that today. It looks like it's been fixed. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Trevor, I see you were making a face. Uh, I, is that enough to cover our expenses? Yes. Oh, yeah. um, because right now, since the demand the demand charge was dropped at the start of this fiscal year, yeah. uh, we haven't had to pay a bill on that on that station. That's all I love to hear. Yep. Yep. Tell them what the other stuff. reason we don't have to pay a bill, Chris, and it's kudos to you for the Schedule Z. Yes. So the Schedule Z, um, thank you for reminding me of that. So um, every fall I work with Diane Cornwell on making sure that our Schedule Z is uh, really optimized to the best of our ability. So making sure that we aren't racking up unreasonable balances on any of our accounts and drawing down the ones that seem oh, to be wow. the biggest draw. Um, yeah. So right now we have, I think, a decent amount to cover what we're 
using on that charger. And obviously we're probably going to want to reallocate some when there's more chargers, especially with those DC fast chargers that are going to be using a lot more energy there than we're used to. Right. Um, but I'm, I'm confident that we can, we can make that happen without any hardship. I just want to make sure we're covering. Yeah. And, and I don't think you were here, but uh, we, when we were coming back from MNA, we had Leiden uh, select board with us because mm -hmm. of carpooling and yeah. she pointed out that in Leiden, I think they're doing 23 cents a, or maybe it's no, 27, 27, 27 cents okay. yeah. and they're actually making a profit you know okay. little Leiden yeah that's of course good. they probably got a lot of EVs out there because right. you know yeah great I uh, guess it's the only EV local yeah just so they're, yeah. they are sure that we're not there. well just also you know. six months from now it'd be nice to to see if the a lot of EV cars tell you what the kilowatt hour charge is mm -hmm. on the EVs that are nearest you, the yeah. charging stations. So yeah. this is going to put us in a different category of if somebody's near here, they're, oh, 30 cents. Okay, that's normal. Right. Because it can be 42. It can be, I see. you know. Yeah. Okay. So Right. The, the 75 cents was absolutely driving people away. Yeah. And now with the 30 cents, uh, we're very lucky to have had that demand charge dropped because before the end of fiscal 23, we were losing money on 75 cents, but since we were able to switch to the different rate and get the demand charge removed, we are in a much better, we're in much better shape, even cutting it in more than half. How much? So if it's at 30 cents, right, how much does it cost to charge that car? Well, you know, how long the, would you be charging 30 cents an hour? Or? Well, no. So, so like um, a, a level two is slower than a level three, but okay. I, I'm only really familiar with level threes. Okay. So. I can go in and at 11, a level three, mm -hmm. you, I use Tesla ones, but yeah. So I can do an 80% charge in about 30 to 35 minutes. So that means if I had nothing on my car. Right. And I've never been, I've never spent more than $15. Okay. Going to an 80% charge. Yeah. Um, so, so it's like, yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty, it's definitely, it's comparable to like getting gas for like, 220 a gallon right that's yeah that's what i was trying yeah. to figure out yeah so it's it's a lot because there are no taxes on that for road work right i mean mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're talking about trying to you know make an yeah. adjustment but just trying to figure you know it's okay. just that you know the evs versus gasoline powered vehicles yeah they'd have to charge like 50 times what they charge for gasoline in order to make it make it comparable it just right. doesn't make sense to do it Got at it. some point it will yeah Yep. Okay. Thank you. That's good education. Just wanted to know what that was yeah. about. Well, I don't know much about it, but that that helps. Yeah. I know more now. <laughs> okay. So are Trevor, Thanks, you feel Chris. comfortable about the... Of course. Oh, sorry, Chris. Are you Oh, oh I... no, I was I was just acknowledging Trevor said thank you. Um so that was all I had in terms of the Leary lot. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Um I'm Trevor, do you minute. feel okay about the um um minutes of yes June 13, 14 yeah okay so i'll make a motion to approve them I'll second that motion all those in favor tim lgi trevor mcdaniel i carolyn ness i thank you um good catch uh chris oh this I, of course and trying to just get get moving on this i skipped yeah. over it um we so the uh we have an appointment to the community preservation committee and i believe we are going to um, appoint Kathy Sylvester. Is that true? Um, that is that what we who we want to appoint? Because I will make that motion. I mean, if we're going to to put her as a select board, and then Satu or the planning board is going to nominate Satu, then then I'm fine with that. Okay, and and my understanding is we're trying to get Peter James appointed under the Housing Authority when we get that sorted out. I don't know how we will do that. Yeah, we it, have to okay. that out first. All right. It's it's going to have to go to town meeting. They're, they're, yeah. just, they're just trying to get enough people because since two departments don't come and we don't have a housing authority, they they want to get a okay. safety factor for quorum. Right. All right. Well, I just want to make sure that we get back to Peter James and um, uh, Chris Curtis because, you know, we don't oh, usually have people. I know. Forward. I yeah, and, and I think Mr. And the James might be a prescribed good... by the statute. Yeah, right, right. So, would you just, uh, Casey or Chris, can you make sure that you get back to Peter and 
And Chris, Peter wanted to get involved with yes. our community again, and yeah, and yeah. His wealth and knowledge would love to have. Yeah, and you know, he was what, one of whether the, it's here or somewhere. Well, else. he was one of the original persons that um, yeah, yeah was involved in getting the community preservation committee started. So I want to make sure that if he's now that he's feeling better um, and he wants to get back involved, we want to make sure that he's aware that we want him to be back involved, and so we'll try to figure out a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I mean, Casey. I think we can resolve this housing authority issue at the annual town meeting. Yeah. Okay. As long as Casey's satisfied with the language that. Yeah. As yeah. long as we can work it with council. That's That'd what be I great. Yeah. Would, you just, to would you just sir. let Peter know that? Isn't it, isn't it correct that if we approve something at a town meeting that requires the state to agree to it, that we can enact it immediately? And yeah. if the state tells us later we have to stop, then we stop. Oh, it's the only, other than zoning, right? Or something like that. I think that. general bylaws aren't necessarily. Um, as scrutinized as zoning bylaws, yes, but and they it. usually go into effect upon the date of approval. Right. right. I don't know, and this is this is where I'm a little cautious because I don't know about the statute for Community Preservation Act. Yeah. Well, um, the good thing about it is that you know by at the end of the annual town meeting, the the, the CPC kind of goes on into hibernation for a period of months. Right. So. Um, Although I don't know that that's going to be the case. I've had a couple conversations. I know they're going to change their. I think spike. they want to start right. doing a more inclusive um, right. information sharing process with the community, right. which I think is a great thing. Right. Yeah. So, so do we have a second? Yeah. We second. We yep. second. We second. Oh, oh, are, are we're we all second. second. Yeah. So this is to appoint Cal Kathy Sylvester. As, as the select, as the select yeah. board appointee. All right. She's moving over, right? right. She's right. still there, but she's right. moving a seat. She's not, she's yeah. not running. Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And I, did we have a SATU or we don't have a SATU? The no. planning board now has to. Planning board right. has to make that board determination. Yeah. The not planning board has to appoint and then, and then we say, hey, great. Okay. All right. So I think we're all set for their meeting. Um, so Kate. So I was just going to say, Casey, do you have? Well, I just wanted to oh. say one thing, it just just so that we get it out there. I know we signed the um, the Warren uh, stuff for the elections, but just to make a, a notice that greetings in the name of the Commonwealth, you are hereby required to notify and warn the inhabitants of said city or town who are qualified to vote in primaries to vote at the main meeting room at the town offices, 8 Conway Street and the Village of South Deerfield on Tuesday, the 5th of March coming up pretty quick. So um, from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. for the following purposes to cast their votes for presidential primaries for the candidates for of political parties um, for the following offices, presidential preference, um, state committee man, state com committee woman, and town committees. Really? Town committees? <laughs> oh, maybe committees that like, yeah, like the Democratic, Democratic, Democratic committees. committees. Okay. Yep. I was going to say. Okay. I just want to make that make people aware on camera that we'll have the primaries here on March fifth, um, from seven a.m. to eight p.m. Well, just to carry out of curiosity, um, we don't start our special elections till ten o'clock, which yep. disenfranchises people who would like to come vote early mm -hmm. uh, a little bit, or inconveniences doesn't disenfranchise. But is there a reason why? Is it just I think it was the choice that people made, is my understanding. Okay. You can make that change in a general bylaw change if you wanted to. Yeah. Now, I was just curious if there was if there was volition on our part. We have flexibility or if this was yeah. prescribed by law. So it's not a no, I don't think it's prescribed. I think it was a choice, like Monday, for yeah. instance. Yeah. You could make the change to make it a Tuesday. And recall that Julie had requested maybe we consider moving the election yeah. and the town meeting. Yep. later into may right but before june yeah um to give a little more prep time to review particularly Finance. school budget yeah and we really haven't had more conversation about that so well the pandemic yeah you know has took i mean we were moving town meeting and stuff anyway mm -hmm. so right this sort of took the discouraging out okay is there anything um, else well, K Casey's yeah. report i got a couple of things and Good. chris has a couple of things chris do you want to go through yours first Sure, I can do that. So I gave my Leary lot update. That was the first item on my report. Um, I already talked a little bit about the brick grant. So the uh, 
building resilient infrastructure and communities grant through FEMA. Um, we received comments back from MEMA about our submitted application that was sent in a couple of weeks ago uh, for the Pine Nook Road, Eagle Brook culvert upgrades and stream improvements. Um, I made a number of format adjustments and a couple of additional details that needed to be added uh, to strengthen the competitiveness of our application. Uh, that was sent in yesterday, so that's in good shape. Um, the Farm Assistance Forum, I helped out with that. That was held on January 25th, and it was a great success. Um, so that was part of the MVP 2.0 program, um, part of one of the outreach efforts. Uh, I was happy to be a part of that. Um, cybersecurity. So the MCAGP program that I applied for several months ago, uh, I received confirmation via a phone call last week, and then I got the official email on Monday of this week um, that we have been selected for that, which is great news. That's going to be able to get no-cost training to our staff um, to be able to do cybersecurity exercises, um, education materials. Um, it's, it's really badly needed especially in uh, a small municipal workforce where, frankly, we're very easy targets. Um, and the cybersecurity workshop that I went to at the MMA meeting talked about that a lot. Um, so really great news for us. That's going to be implemented. I have a webinar on that next week that I'm going to be learning how we get that ball rolling. Um, AI minutes. This one will make Trevor happy because I know he's talked to me about this a couple times. Um, so looks like. <laughs> yes, I've been exploring some opportunities for using AI software. Um, just basically, we have a huge backlog of minutes that it's been a huge burden, frankly, on our staff, including myself, to try and get done. Um, and I've heard anecdotally about other towns beginning to experiment with software like Autopilot um, and even the more basic, well-known ones like ChatGPT. Um, where you can automatically generate meeting notes and summaries out of recordings. Um, the key note that I've heard from other municipal people who have worked with that is that you can't really use it for the entire effort. You can just use it to assist because it inevitably makes mistakes um, and, and you have to fix them. Um, but it can help you cut back on the time needed rather than having to manually take all of the notes. Um, so I have found some success with that so far. I wouldn't say it's been resounding. Um, all of the different ones that I've, I've toyed around with have made still a great deal of mistakes that I end up having to go back and fix. And at one point I just kind of gave up and started taking them by hand because I was getting tired of fixing silly errors, but um, it, it, it is promising. It, it's a work in progress. Um, just wait wait I, six I think, months, it'll, it, it exponential growth, you know, it'll be absolutely about six months. It, for better or worse. Um, <laughs> so um, I'll keep I'll keep working on that. And I haven't ruled it out. But right yeah, now it's it, it's not a uh, an end all be all solution yet. Well, thanks. For um, Appreciate that. Thank of you course. for trying it out to save us time and effort. How different is it than like um, direct transcription? I mean, you know, obviously, you know, obviously you'd never want to have direct transcription in notes, but right. Uh, you know, the this recording says, you know, it'll do a transcription, right? So mm -hmm. is it? So that's, it's actually, um, I, I use the direct transcription that YouTube generates as part of the summaries that those other softwares yeah. will create. Uh -huh. um, so it's a matter of copy, paste, summarize this. Um, yeah. oh, I see. And yes. so it is still work. Yeah. It is still work, um, especially when it gets details wrong and it misses context and key points. Yeah. Um, my, yeah. my personal favorite, as a slight aside, was I, I, I tried it for a recent set of minutes where it was really confused by the brick grant, and it kept talking about a project known as the brick. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite. Is it um, sarcasm? <laughs> <laughs> it will get so, there, man. It's so close. It's it's, it's close. It's it's, yeah. it's getting smarter. Yeah. Um, so that's that uh, quick personnel update. The assistant town clerk positions posted to the website and on Indeed. We've already started to get applications in. I know I noticed one came in, I think, 10 minutes after it had been posted to Indeed. So um, there's definitely people still looking for jobs out there and we'll hopefully 
get a lot of good candidates to choose from. Um, and then the state revolving funds. So Senator Comerford testified on January 31st on DEP's 2024 draft intended use plans for the clean water and the drinking water SRF programs, both of which included projects here in Deerfield. Um, and I wanted to thank Skip Yaswinski and Justin Skelly for assisting me. They were both able to provide information about the local projects that were part of those plans, which the Senator included in her testimony. Great. So um, that's all I have for you right now. I was uh, one, one thing, uh, there was one thing I wanted to talk about. Oh, the, um, it's getting late in the meeting. I'm glad it's not only me. No, no, it's me. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. I'm like, oh, I want to. Too uh, much information. We talked about it today. Oh, uh, Darius is getting started to bid the yes. uh, front of the entryway. And I, on the next. This is an item on end. It was sort of, it's a yeah. notation, next, but we're going to put it on the next. Yeah, next agenda. agenda, we're going to talk about maybe giving uh, Darius authority to sign, or maybe he'll just bring it over to sign because we're the awarding authority. So we would sign off on it, but he's running the whole project. So so this is this is the entryway kind of, construction. Yeah, trying to figure out um, yeah, who, who streamline it. Right, yeah, streamline I'm, it so everybody. But we it. have to have all the documents because we're exactly. going to have to do all recording. the reporting for the yeah. MVP. Yeah. So we need to have them that. where we can get to them. Yeah, yep. 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 he'll help with all that. So I just want to bring it up that we had that. Con I had the conversation today. With and it's serious as space. It's him and yeah. you know him and Bill talking. deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it makes sense. I just want to make sure we have the documents. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Good no I had a brain seizure the other day when I was at Leo's and I looked into this big white truck and it was Bill and I. You know, I recognize his face, but I don't recognize him. <laughs> oh, hey, oh, big oh, truck you got there. Right. <laughs> yes. He does have a big truck. There you go. Uh, um, okay. Do you want to hit on anything, Casey? Yes. So I've been following up on the community preservation thing um, that we talked about earlier. Um, they, so there's going to, you guys are going to meet and talk about the roads, which yep. will be good because it'll inform what the rest of the work that happens around here. We don't have the road money yet. I expect, based on the email we got from Sean Crone, and I expect it in the next couple weeks. Okay. Um, there's still work DPU is doing on municipal aggregation process revisions. We're going to have to wait and see what that looks like. They do send periodic emails. We have not talked to, to the... Um, Dynergy? consultant about this is it not dynagy it's um colonial, yeah. colonial, colonial power colonial yeah yeah yep. we haven't talked about anything but i suspect we'll see an email relatively soon okay um the landfill solar project as i mentioned earlier beth greenblatt is reviewing the information next amps provided uh we're going to meet and then she's going to reach we're still waiting for another um amount of information from next amp they haven't gotten it to us and beth and i had an email exchange about it today so I think she's going to chibi them next week. Um, Tilton Library Edition renovation project. So the contract documents are being finalized. The schedule to put the notification out is to have it go live on the 14th, which is next week. Um, there's going to be some tasks that we have to complete internally, which is combines notification and any other publications like to the town website that we need to do. Um, so there's also a walkthrough that's going to be scheduled for the 22nd, just in case anybody needs yeah, to know or wants to know. You're taking care of it. Good. Yeah. Um, I don't know. There's one thing I don't know that I'll have to check in with Carolyn about is this, the, we did have Treehouse scheduled for a conversation tonight, but I don't know where we are with that. So I haven't followed up. Um, I had at the Homeland Security meeting, I, uh, John Warren was there from, uh, Homeland Security. He's one of the ones for assigned to our region. And he's doing an assessment with Nate from NEMA, our representative. Mm -hmm. And so um, as far as I know, it, they're coming up with the same issues, um, secondary egress, okay, you know, arrival of everybody at the same time kind of thing. So whatever okay. list that John has come up with and uh, the fire chief and so the EAP even, planning process needs right, to continue. Everything seems to be the same, same issues. Mm -hmm. okay. So are identifying the same issues. So it's, I think they canceled tonight and wanted to postpone it because of, you know, they're, they're meeting next week again mm -hmm. to come up to, with, to, to go through that. Okay. The same, same issues. 
Um, so the St. James church property, I've been talking to the owner. We had, we discussed some changes to the sale agreement and she's going to follow up. I did, I was able to forward some more information to our attorney about this and we're waiting for a review from her attorney. Um, the police HVAC system, the contracts are all signed and everything's ready to start. The um, notice to proceed was provided by the engineer. So they have 100 day, 120 days from the signature date, which was Friday the 2nd. Um, but Chief Paterik and I are pretty sure that if something goes on, we'll be able to handle that in case we need to do an extension. We don't think it's going to happen, but you never know. So we'll get more information once the engineer and the contractor start working closely together. Um, South County Senior Center location. I circled back around with my colleagues in Waitley and Sunderland and um, got the update on the potential purchase of the Plumtree Road property. And it may not be possible in the foreseeable future. So like Tim alluded to earlier, I reached back out to the COG to get the feasibility study um, off the ground again. Uh, I have to set up a meeting. They have a new person. So we need to set, I, the procurement, the assistant procurement officer, Ellen Batchelder is familiar with it, but with Andrea Woods retired, we need to fill Laura in. She's the chief procurement officer on the background information. The good news is, is it's, it was in a fairly decent state before Andrea retired. So I think we'll, it shouldn't take too long is my hope. The other piece of this is um, reaching out to the office of elder affair, the executive office of elder affairs, which was where we got the money. They actually passed through the earmark money to us. We just have to make sure that the planned work that Tim's talking about is something they they're okay with because we do have to do a final construction report as part of the contract. So I was waiting for Stacy to get back to me. I haven't talked to her, but I can send her, I'll send her an email. Thank you for doing that and trying to expedite it. Yeah, we need to expedite that and we need to make sure we expedite HVAC so that the core police department doesn't suffer. So yeah. <laughs> um, the other thing is, is the RFP for lease space for the administrative and programming functions for South County Senior Center. Um, the Waitley Town Administrator was working on that to assist, and we have a tentative timeline. He and I talked about it again today. Right. So we're hoping we could get this out um, in the Central Register for the 15th and the newspaper notifications the 15th. I'm sorry, the 21st and the 28th, and then the RFP be available on the 21st with an addendum yeah. deadline of March 14th, and then a submission deadline of March 21st. And I think um, the church might want to just get a little bit of help just because they've yeah. never done, might yep. want just the pointers on how we would fill it out or that kind of thing, or just, because I know they want- of Some of those documents are a little um, confusing. Yeah, just for the uh, for the church- area, Or Holy uh, Family. For Holy Family. Yeah, they, they, for an extension of- Yes, yeah. yes. Exactly. and it, basically to follow that procurement requirement yeah, so that we can continue to use that space while we define what what yeah. permanent yeah. space we'd be looking at. That'd be great. And Appreciate so to your point, Tim, I'm sorry, I missed this part. So the feasibility study, we have a community compact efficiency and regionalization grant for $75,000 to pay for that. Yes. Um. So I- have to talk to Sean Cronin because sometimes feasibility studies take a little bit longer than you expect. So I'm going to reach out to Sean too. He's been in meetings. The only reason I know he's been in meetings is because I've had to go to them too. So, so what, yeah, we just tomorrow's the first day he doesn't have a meeting. I think want to get that going. Yeah, um, we can do that. And then, so let's get to decam real quick. So we finished the decam letter after Structures North, which is the engineering consultant evaluated the roof structure of the sanctuary and i sent the requested decam for relief from both the bidding and advertising requirements in chapter 149 they usually have a turnaround time of no more than 48 hours um they may want more information but luckily uh john watney from structures north gave us a timeline so that they know when um the basic design documents will be ready so whatever they come back for questions i will work with john on yeah, I thought that was a really convincing argument for so. 
He and, helped me a lot with it. I mean, the yeah. beginnings of it, you have to answer the questions, but some of them are related to design and I couldn't answer them. Yeah. All. Thank you again, Casey, because I, you know, we're supposed to get some snowy weather starting yes. next Tuesday. Carolyn and, called me and we're worried about it, but it was a question I, of getting I, well, info. I, you know, snow load is an issue and I don't want any more damage to the building. Well, that's essentially the snowfall patrol is yeah. what John Watney was talking about. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, the upgrades project, we had some work that we had to get done today after the meeting that I did with Trevor um, related to the stump removal. Mm -hmm. um, the ADA complaint, I turned all the information in we needed to. I'm waiting for architectural access to get back to me. They said Good it time. may take a while to send the compliance letter, but he's aware of it. Um, small town administrators, there's legislation. I will forward this to you. They finalized the legislative priorities at the MMA conference, and it's something they provided in a format that towns can sign on to. So I will show that to you. Um, the other thing that I've been helping with related to both the Western Mass, what are they? I keep getting this wrong. The Western Massachusetts and Rural Conference. I've been working sort of in the background to listen so that I can assist the president and vice president of STAM um, to keep them up to date on what's going on. Essentially, we had a planning meeting in the conference, and I think Trevor can back, Trevor and Carolyn are aware of this. The conference may be held on the 27th of April as opposed yeah. to the 6th because there was a conflict with another yeah. similar conference. Yeah. So we'll see how that falls out we're going to have another meeting next week about it and i did notify the president of this of the um basics of that meeting it it does seem to be a really good um agenda though we're going to have a packed agenda so. yeah i think it's going to be pretty busy based on what i heard yeah i think it will be a really um excellent conference for us uh whenever i can i go to the rural affairs meetings with director Gobi and her um aide mallory sullivan i think is her last name um, and so I, I give an outline in my report of some of the things that have come up during those processes and or during those meetings. And so there's a rural emergency medical services training grant program that I forwarded on to Tim and Josh Sparks so they can take care of if they have any interest in. Um, there's a couple of other grant programs that we were notified of during these meetings that I we should be getting more information on. Um, let's see, financial. So I've been working with Mark Brennan, uh, the chair of capital to finalize a, the materials for the upcoming capital meeting. There has, I have had some glitches, some technical difficulties, so I haven't been able to send out the project requests because I usually compile them, um, so that there's one document for everybody to read. I did send out a basically a short list of what we had received. And I also can give that to the board because um, there's a couple of big projects that are basically the start of larger endeavors. Um, and then there's DPW equipment requests. Um, there's elementary school. Um, there's, a, there's a couple of things from the elementary school. One thing was put on hold. There's a couple of things from SCEMS. Um, there's one item, two items for South County Senior Center and then Open Space and Tritown both have requests. Okay. So budget preparation, we talked about it earlier. We'll continue to do that. Annual town meeting preparation. I have one additional article at this point, but I'm going to send a reminder out to everybody in case there's things they want to do. I don't know if there's any zoning, but I would say publicly that bylaw changes and zoning changes cost us money in the town clerk's budget. So to Julie's still here. So I would say that we need to be mindful of what that costs. And so I've been conferring with, with Cassie about what she could look at in terms of what her budget would look, look like if we had to make another zoning change, because the zoning change we did last fall was a significant cost that was not anticipated. So we're trying to communicate a little bit better so that we understand the impacts of what these changes can be on her budget. Um, and then the community compacts, we have some personnel policy suggestions from the Collins Center that I've started to review, but I need to meet with them and talk to them about it. The efficiency and regionalization requires some follow-up with Sean Cronin. 
um, shared streets and spaces. Actually, Christopher Dunn is working and trying to schedule a meeting so we can discuss some of the requirement engineering requirements that might be necessary to do some of this crosswalk work. And then we've got reporting required for a couple of issues that are in the offing, one of whom, one of which is the dangerous dog appeal. We have to follow up on documentation. Um, Chris has been following up on in, on inspections with uh, Colin, the animal control officer. Um, and then there's some professional development that's going on, particularly in our office. So assistant town administrator, Nolan has mentioned that he is taking the certification courses for the MCPPO, which is the public purchasing yep. program. Great. I'm renewing my designation too. Um, so there's a, basically we do a combination of remote and one day trainings to finalize those uh, courses. And then the designation application for me, I'm not sure about Chris, but I'm thinking it's probably going to be about the same time. They'll probably go in in April and May. Okay. Thank so. you. Um, and then regular stuff is moderating Zoom meetings, bills and payroll, and I will check on the EMD's stipend, Trevor. Okay. Um, and then regular just emails, telephone, walk-in, a lot of yeah. email, a lot, a lot of, of work. Mm -hmm. I know. Um, I just had a quick question on an email you sent me on the, I couldn't open it or see it. It was the pedestrian bridge uh, for Stillwater. Oh, oh. So that was a comment request from DOT or review request. I sent it to John. I can, sh I'll send you John's response. There were two documents that were attached and I had trouble reading them myself. So what I did was from a public safety perspective, it's really how they allow access across the bridge for various things when they start doing the still water work. Yeah. So his thought was, there's a couple of options. His thought was, I, I can send you what he said, but he looked at it from a public safety perspective. And once I went back and looked at what he was talking about and had some context, it was a little bit easier for me to understand. So I'll send okay. you what he said. All right. That's fine. I just couldn't, I, I mean, there was, I, I couldn't. Open I can it try to print it for you, but no, the, no, you don't need to. It's but just sometimes that it's hard. John's comments will be enough. It's just that when you tried to open it, it was partial open, but you, it was cut off. So I, I couldn't make sense of it. Sometimes it's how that pdf work so yeah. i apologize no that's fine i just want to make sure we didn't forget about that nope that's okay. why i sent it out i wanted to see if you had any comments in particular but definitely john mm. because he's going to think about it holistically yeah okay so so that's really what i have perfect and just want to expand a little bit on the library situation um sub bids for the contracts are due march 6th and the general bids are due march 20 then there'll be a week or two of Evaluation. Dan and his team bringing recommendations. Um, so it's probably end of March. Yeah, end of March, early April, when we would award a contract, then there'd be a period of time before then. So this may push the project back enough so that it'll help Brenda in terms of when the budgets, mm -hmm. when the bands are going to happen. Yeah. So, um, which may push the uh, finish date, obviously. Yeah. You know, 12 Four months, months is going to be next April. Yeah. Uh, or May. Yep. So, and I will say, Candace is preparing, um, basically to develop notification processes and signage to start letting people know. And she sent an email about it today. Right. So I'm going to see if I can help her a little bit with that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor. Tim LGI. Trevor McDaniel, I thank Carolyn, you all very much. Carolyn Nessai. And thanks thank for you hanging in there, Julie. <laughs>